put the flour on the disc and that'll keep you warm. Chair down. Right. Good. You there? Good evening, everybody. Evening. Good evening. Ah, Good evening. this is working. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Right, now that was the first time I've ever joined direct from the parish council email. And I've got to do an online email as opposed to through Outlook. And uh, that was a little bit more in, involved. <laughs> a lot right. more involved. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but you still, you still got here quicker than sometimes. <laughs> oh. But it did give chance for my cup of tea to arrive. <laughs> <laughs> so the, there are positives yes yes likewise yes um, okay oh, any else but else coming oh you said Anne's asked uh, I've just resent the link to Anne so hopefully she should be okay. here any minute oh and I've got okay. Peter in the waiting room Hang oh on. fine okay yeah well apologies to everybody for the, the, uh, the slow start uh, just enlarge that a bit. Thank you. Gosh. I've got my agenda on 140%. I can read it now <laughs> without glasses. Oh, I just <clears throat> lost Peter. He was there a minute ago. Lost Kieran now. Oh. Kieran's gone. <laughs> oh, we've got Peter back. Oh, crumbs. It's not being lost. <laughs> So we are all out of practice, aren't we? Yes. Yes. And this is, I think this is the most number of parishioners we've ever had at one of our meetings. So not the best time to really... Anyway. Shall we... I mean, shall we go for it? I think... Can you, can you cope, Nicola? Send yep, people go in. for it. I'll, um, I'll add them as they come. Yeah, OK. Right. Fine. OK, well, thanks, everybody, for joining us. And good evening. Uh, 1st of February, uh, black bin day today, of course. Uh, just a little note to myself because I haven't put it out yet. Um, that's just a little note for everybody. So thanks very much and Happy New Year and all that sort of stuff, even though it seems a long time ago since it started. Um, the first item is to receive any apologies for absence and declarations of interest. Now we've had the uh, an apology from Ian, Ian Bates. Anybody yeah. else? Presumably yeah. not. But Okay. Um, second item is a declaration of interest. Does anybody have any interest in tonight's meetings that they wish to declare? Nothing. General shaking of heads. If you suddenly find yourself discussing something which you think you have, just let us know at the time, but uh, that's fine. Um, okay, so this is the point where I can close the meeting and ask the members of the public who are present uh, if they wish to speak uh, for three minutes on any item that's on the agenda. Now we have a few members of the uh, parish, so Andy wishes to speak. I bet, I bet, have you given Andy his recording rights? Yeah. 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 Actually, already let me in. Thank you. For Fine. That, okay. Uh, Andy, far away. Uh, just two comments um, uh, on item 2021-156 about the flooding in the village. Oh, yes. Um, just um, to thank you, really. I keep, every time I walk through the village with a dog, I see Graham leaping out of a ditch uh, with a high vis jacket on, uh, unblocking something. So uh, thank I'm you. Pro I'm actually protesting against, against H HS2. Oh, are oh, you right? Well, well, you're doing a swampy, are you in the swamp? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, no, that's really good. So, Graham, thanks. It's and uh, they're much better uh, than they ha ever have been, I think. So that's certainly helped. Thank uh, you. And a quick second one was about the uh, Christmas lights in the pavilion. Um, I thought, well, uh, I got we got so much feedback from villagers about both the pavilion lights and the village hall lights uh, and the tree. They found, I think it was fabulous and should con definitely continue it every year. So they're my comments. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. I will just we're discussing flooding later, but I will just pass some of the thanks on to Ian because he was quite helpful as well. But we'll, we'll discuss that later. <laughs> I'll take it all. Um, does anybody no, else wish to enter Parkinson? No. Um now, Sandy, do I call you Sandy or Sandra? I noticed on the on the papers you're Sandy, but you're Sandra on the and you're now you're now um, okay, I'll take it to Sandy. You're muted, Sandy. Good start, isn't it? <laughs> no, my, that's my official name, Sandra, but everybody calls me Sandy. So. <laughs> okay, right, right. Okay. 
That's kind. Thank you very much. Okay, and so I'll, I'll close the meeting and we'll go into parish council discussion time. Um, first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the parish council meeting held on the 7th of December and the minutes of the planning committee held on Tuesday the 15th of December. Now, you've all seen this in advance. They were given to you as, as drafts. Are you okay with the first one? Monday, 7th of December? Anybody got any general nodding? Okay, fine. Peter's fine. Okay, so I'll, I'll propose that I sign those in due course. Can I have a second of that, please? Yeah, Heather's seconding. All those in favour? Wave of hands, because I think we're all there, weren't we? Fine. Okay, thank you very much. We've got that. It's quite hard to count, Nicola, it isn't is it? Hard, hard to count. Sorry, yeah. Rob, with your hand up. Yeah, fine. And Kieran was, yeah, okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, just to refresh my memory, who's, I, mean, I don't need to, I just, I was thinking who wasn't here uh, at the last meeting, but that's past now. Um, and the other one is the minutes of the planning committee. That's when we were discussing, uh, just to remind ourselves, this was the land west of Witchwood, which is being discussed tomorrow as well, um, and the proposed houses at Fields View. That was on the 15th of December. Um, again, you've had those as draft. Anybody, uh, we are happy with those on the planning committee? Good, okay, can I propose that I sign those again in due course? Can I have a second of that, please? Yep, Kieran seconding. All those in favor on the planning committee, if they could raise their hands. Yep, fine. Okay, thank you very much. That's all five of us. Um, yes, because six is is, uh, is Anne when she joins us. Okay, thank you very much. Right, um, item 151. Matters arising from the last meeting, including Clark's report, information only and discussion. Uh, this is where our clerk gets to update us on what's happened since we last met. So thank you very much, Nicola. Sorry, Anne is just joining us. Okay, fine. I um, had a matter arising, uh, Graham. Wait, does that is that allowed, Nicola? Uh, it, it's allowed. There's no discussion or decision on it. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Uh, we agreed that we could have three months trial of reporting to the spectrum but the spectrum isn't being published now, so we probably need to correct that at some stage. Right, okay. Okay. Sorry I'm late, by the way. It's okay. Oh, yeah. Trouble on, with technology. To, we're on to uh, item 151 now. This is um, the Clark's report. So, um, as you're all aware, uh, Councillor Laura Chalton has resigned from the council. The notice of vacancy was issued, um, but no election was called by the electors, so the council can now proceed with the co-option this evening. I sent round um, an email to councillors asking them to check their declaration of pecuniary interest forms that we hold. I've only had responses from three councillors, so can the remaining councillors please check their uh, DPI forms and let me know whether they're correct or if there needs to be any amendments. And, and do we get those from you or what? I've emailed you the ones that uh, you've already filled in for you to check mm. and I Listen can send you a blank on. one if you need me to. Okay. Um, so Brideway number one, which is the drift from Gravely Way, um, County Council have been in correspondence with the landowners regarding the state of the drift. Uh, the, landloader, the landowners have advised that they will carry out the repair work to the path once the weather conditions allow. Obviously, it's far too wet at the moment for any kind of works like that. Um, this will entail scraping the excess soil off of the surface and laying uh, MOT type 1 planings, which will create a firm and vehicle proof surface. Uh, CCC have advised that it will be aesthetically jarring, their words, to start with, but the grass and vegetation will grow through uh, and the result they? will be a green reinforced track. I think they've done it, haven't they? Uh, no, they've put down some rough planings just as a temporary fix. Okay. Um, so I have been in correspondence with our local highways officer um, who has advised that he either has raised or will be raising work orders for the following issues. Uh, along the high street, he's asked for the drainage gullies to be unblocked by the County Council and he's also sent a request to the District Council to sweep the curb line. Uh, he is uh, raising another work order for the blocked drainage gully on Church End, just outside number 10, which is uh, causing a considerable puddle at the moment. Um, their work to Scots Crescent, they've agreed to do a pothole work order for the whole road. 
and they've also replaced the large pothole on Potton Road, which was at the brow of the hill, which was a fairly deep one. Uh, so that had a temporary repair on it to start with and will have a permanent fix. Um, they are looking at the rumble strips on Gravely Way and that measurements have been taken for that to be resurfaced. Um, and there's also a giveaway bollard to be replaced, which has been knocked down again. So just to uh, issue another reminder that if there are any highways issues that you see around the village, you can report them yourselves on the County Council website. So we've received a uh, communication from the A428 team, Highways England team, uh, managing the A428 development to say that they have delayed their submission of their development consent order until the end of February 2021 due to issues caused by COVID and the next forum meeting will be after that submission. Um, I have been working away on my uh, SILCA course, this is the Certificate in Local Council Administration. Um, I've now submitted and passed three units of the course which amounts to half the credits required uh, several policies have been identified which the council don't currently have in place and the, the policy group are now due to meet in February to review these. Um, at the last meeting you agreed a deadline of uh, yesterday for councillors to submit their photograph and uh, bio paragraph for the website. Um, so could those councillors that have not sent me these please do so as soon as possible. Um, on the parish council owned street lighting, PC1 and PC20 have both been reported as faulty to the maintenance contractor. Um, and again, another reminder that if you do see any of the PC street lights not working, can you let me know and quote the PC number which will be found on the street light. I have uh, continued the dialogue with the county council regarding the uh, LHI bid from 2020 to 21. Um, so this was for the feasibility study moving us from the AFR map. Um, most of the suggestions that I have uh, given them to redirect this feasibility study have been rejected. However, we are still looking into the options of placing AMPR cameras uh, to advise on the direction of the traffic flows. So I'm still waiting for a cost for that suggestion. Um, and as Heather just mentioned, the publication of Spectrum has been suspended due to the lack of village news caused by COVID. And that's me done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, right, so nipping back to the agenda. Right, um, item number 152, which receive and discuss the financial reports. Um, now, we haven't done these for a couple of meetings, so I would like to just uh, run through these if, if that's okay. Um, so if we could just call those up. Uh, if anybody has any questions, hopefully, Nicola will be able to um, comment on that. Uh, so one, five, two, there's quite a few. The only, there's, there's a point that was mentioned in the standing, in the uh, supporting documents is that now VAT is mentioned in, as a separate line. Um, but apart from that, everything's in the same format, I believe. Yes. Does anybody have any comments or questions? Um, I mean, Nicola, is, is it too much of a faff to put it on the screen or is that a bit... Am I, am I throwing you a curveball? Yeah, I mean, does, does anybody want to see it on the screen? I mean, it only really works if if someone's got a question. That's all. Uh, do you want to see it on the screen? Um, just just a, a quick question. Um, looking at our budgeted amount and current spend, uh, mostly we are underspending, but there are some uh, items where we've overspent, or it's it's more than uh, the, the the planned amount. Let's say. Um, are we clear on what we're, how we're going to cover those? Sorry, Anne. Well, the cricket pitch, we're saying our current spend is 585, our budgeted amount was zero. Uh, that's because when we created the budget, the cricket pitch was lumped within the Green Open Spaces budget. So the Green Open Spaces budget covered the cricket pitch. After that budget was issued, you asked me to split out the um, cricket okay. pitch and the maintenance person contract, sorry, the maintenance contract for the green. So that's why that budgetary line zero. Okay, there are others that are just a little bit over budget, like uh, training was a thousand and it's spent uh, already 1,065 plus 74p. 
um, audit to six hundred pounds instead of four fifty. So the audit was the cost was increased because we went over the hundred thousand pound mark last year. So that puts into the next price bracket for the external auditor with PK of Little John. Yeah, and things like the uh, legal, sorry, the website, hundred pounds, and we've spent eight seven nine ninety nine. So my question is about how are we covering those differences rather than asking for explanations for them all? I, I presume that we're also down on some things, aren't we? So you sort of yes, uh, down on lots of things. Yes, so presumably that's that's okay. We're sort of plus and minus. We end up similar. Well, we should, I, I we guess should. Hans' point is we should probably have a review and check that rather than assuming. Yeah, we, we should, uh, in, accounting, in an accounting sense, be clear about where we're taking it from and where we're putting it to. Mm -hmm. Teaming and lading, it's known as. There we are. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, presumably we are often plus and minus. Um, I think the, the question is that we don't want to be sort of over at the end of the year, do we? I mean, as, I mean I'll, I'll put you on the spot there, Nicola. As a financial officer, do you see a problem? I think looking at the predicted numbers here, you are looking at a, a, a net income as opposed to a net expenditure. Your income is going to exceed your expenditure for this year. So yes, as you say, where, we, where you've made savings, that should offset where you've overspent. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I mean, there's, there's, there's no harm in this, in this meeting, is there? But I mean, would we normally meet now or would we? Uh, the finance group would normally meet... Um, once the financial year is closed okay to okay. review the the uh, end of year figures okay which is because uh, at the moment you're only you know where you're looking at overspend in a lot of cases you're just looking at my prediction as opposed to an actual overspend yes and the financial year ends at the end of march that's correct so there's really only sort of months or two two months to wait so if you're happy with that then i suggest we go with that well, can I suggest that at your financial meeting, you have clear guidelines as to uh, how you deal with overspend in some areas and underspend in others? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. Yes. Okay, this, this, I, I I'd be surprised if you got away with this in a, in a business. Can I just make a comment? Yeah. All right. And um, in this current financial year, um, uh, to cut end of the end of March, is there much big expenditure to go out? Uh, the only it must be trees, must it? will be the tree work if, yeah. if the invoices come in um, prior to the financial year end, which they quite often don't. Yeah, and each year since 2013 that I've been on in the financial budgets, we've had overspends and underspends of every um, shape and denomination against all the most of the main lines in there, and it hasn't caused a problem. Um, in the uh, eight years so far, but quite happy as a member of the finance group that we meet and discuss it at any time. Okay, but I mean, presumably it would be better once we got it at the end of the at the end of the financial year, wouldn't it? Then it, then then we'd actually be checking things out rather than speculating. So I mean, I think I would propose that. Okay. Yep. Um, okay, so if we can move on to the other ones. If you wanted to. Which one would you like to look at? I don't know. Does anyone, does anyone actually want to look at them or have they, or are they happy with, with, with what they've seen? I'm happy. Heather's happy. I, I rely on you, Peter, as, as the banker in our, in our midst. I tend to rely on you for the, for the, the tricky questions. That's but, a scurrilous accusation. Um, would, I, no, they, they look all fine to me. I mean, um, it's going to be a year, hope hopefully that we recoup some of the overspend from last year yeah. um, and if we've spent a bit more on trees than was budgeted so be it um, it's not a, it's not a problem is it um, the budget is just a guide to where we spend and um, yeah. we've overspent on training which can only be a good thing can't it for across oh, well, the board be a, a, a with the number I don't know how many parish councillors are going on the training I know two have been on I know another two um, are going on it. I don't know if everybody else has signed up for it, but not yet. Not yet, because we haven't spent on training for parish councillors. We haven't spent very much over that period of time at all. Um, mm. So yes, that should be encouraged. And if it means a bit of overspend, it should be a bit of overspend. Um, I think we're quite lucky. There's been no legal fees come in. 
we yeah. had to do the website. So, um, yeah, it l looks all right this year, doesn't it? Okay. Well, it's, it's all there anyway, so there's nothing being hidden. Um, and certainly, I think, I think it's a good idea if we do meet at the end of, well, end of March, beginning of April, then we can review how, how that year went, which I think would be a, a, a good thing. Um, okay, so I'll propose that we move Tony to it. Uh, Tony, don't have this. Receipt. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to propose that we receive those um, account documents. Can I have a seconder for that, please? Uh, Heather's seconding it. All in favour? One, two, three, four. Uh, okay, five, that's in four. Yeah, okay. Um, abstaining? Against? I'm abstaining. You're abstaining. You. Anne's abstaining. Okay, so that's eight, one. Is that right? One, two. No, seven one. There's only eight of you. Yes, that's the reason why. We, yes, okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Nicola. <laughs> I've got to be polite because <laughs> she helped me out tonight with a spare lead that I'd lost. So anyway, uh, moving on. Um, okay, so it's fine. Now, item 153 is the finance regulations. Um, you've had in the, uh, the supporting documents the reason for it all that we would normally have reviewed it, but we didn't. But, and these two are particularly important as we sign each year uh, for our um, AGAR statements, our finances are up to date. We, we sign to say that we have looked at our management accounts regularly. So the thought is that these two are particularly important that we do um, approve them. Um, one of them hasn't changed, so that should be fine. And the other one, it's uh, just effectively small changes with uh, the amounts uh, amended. So I propose that we sign those if it was happy. Question. Are you sure. Uh, so my question is in 2.2 of the financial regulations, it says that once a quarter we need to do a bank reconciliation by somebody who isn't uh, the chair and the clerk. Who does that? We don't have anything in place for that yet. Okay. It was one of the things we were looking at prior to COVID, and obviously that's scuppered everything. So we need to do that really. Yes. Okay. And then my other question was: we at the moment renew them every year. Do we need to do it every year or can we do it every three years? Do the we? financial regs. And the standing orders. Your, when you sign your, for your AGAR, it specifically says you regularly review your financial regs and standing orders. Um, it came out in my silk training actually how uh, lax our policy updates are because obviously it was put, put aside to, to COVID, but those are recommended to review every year. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's good. Um, so if there's no more questions, I would propose that we, oh, Peter, you're quite, on mute. Quite, sorry, I've got a quick question with regards to the standing orders. Yes, yes, yes. Um, number, is it 18F? Uh, yeah, 18F. And 18, more 18F than um, 18C. Tells me that um, thresholds determined by the European Commission every two years. Mm. We surely, we thank God for breakfast, it, we're not paying any notice to what the European people say anymore. This is the policy procurement note for 2019 that we're updating the standing orders with now. I would expect there to be a further policy procurement note to come out shortly okay. in uh, some way, shape or form, updating that. And then it'll have to come back to be signed off for Great England. Well, these, these are going to get signed off again in May or whenever, they? they're, they're, they're going to get reviewed again in May with all the documents. This is, this is a kind of a, um, a catch up because they should have been done uh, in May 20. So this is a bit of a catch up okay. to prove that we're in. in, in. Um, so I'm going to propose that, that uh, we do approve those. Um, can I have a, a second of that action, please? Looking around, no one. Oh yeah, Heather is seconding, fine. Are we all in favor? Can you raise your hand, those in favor? One, two, three, four. Five, six, eight. Thank you much. That's good. Um, and then moving on. Ah, to discuss and decide upon the co-option of a new councillor. Well, that, we have two prospective councillors in our midst. Welcome, both of you. Thank you very much for um, yep. your interest and your uh, paperwork that you've submitted. I trust that all eight of us have seen the documents that are being supplied. Yep. So you've had chance to study. Um, the, those documents and you are in a position where you can vote tonight. Now this goes in the same procedure as we did this time or last year. So we send a uh, Nicola will sorry on the chat button we send a personal note to um, Nicola uh, and she will count the votes and let us know the results. Now Nicola from a technical point of view 
Do I need to advise anything else or is that enough information? No, no, the votes are already coming in. Right. Anne, you've got a question. I do. Is there any reason why we cannot accept both applicants? Uh, yes, our, our standing orders are for nine councillors. So. And is that absolute? Absolute. Yes. Thank you. So, um, we need to vote, if I can remember how to do that. Do you just hit return, Nicola? Yes, please. Have you ever got one for me yet? Oh. Yes, I've got yours. It's the return button rather than enter, isn't it? Oh, I've now got two from you, Kieran. Oh. <laughs> Can't vote twice. Eat. Okay, I've got everyone's in, and I can confirm that Et is our new councillor. Oh, right, uh, Et. Thank you. So I'm going to say All your support. Uh, congratulations on, <laughs> or should I say commiserations? Well done. Um, <laughs> and also, Sandy, Sandra, thank you very much for your uh, interest in uh, submitting your application. Um, okay. uh, I hope you're not too dis dis disappointed. But, no, uh, it's fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> for your okay. Uh, and please stay with us. You, um, you're welcome. Okay, so that's as far as I'm aware now. That is Etta able to stay with us and and vote? Yes, she is. Okay, I presume Et hasn't had standing orders. Uh, sorry, supporting documents. No. Okay, so we need to bear that in mind um, when we come to anything that's a bit more technical or a bit that needs some discussion. Thank you very much. Um, right, now moving on to discuss and decide upon the response to Nat's consultation regarding the relocation of Luton Airport holding stack. Now, Peter has been to various uh, forums, at least two. Yes. Various, um, and has written a, written a report. Have you all seen that? Um, with the view... Surely we've of... just elected a resident expert in, in this one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He just buys them. Yes. Yes, I will, I will just hand it over to Peter. If you can just, is there anything you need to say? Well, if you've read the thing, I, my recommendation is, um, and we have to send this in by the fifth, um, and it has to be put on the um, pro forma that they have on the website. It's not a letter; it's a, a actual use of their um, response document. But we could put, we could copy whatever we put and put it on the website as well. So any interested parishioners could see. My recommendation is the parish council um, makes comment that it doesn't agree with the proposal um, because there has been uh, no consideration for um, the effects that any proposed overflights will have on the village. And we're gonna go from a position of zero to a potential maximum of something like, uh, what did I say, 175? Five. And I know Et will say that uh, not everybody's going to come in and fly into the stack, but that's what the potential is. Yeah. Um, and this is also because, um, and then it could be a little bit more because there is also a proposal by a separate company to expand Luton Airport. And that could entail um, that number of flights going up to 200 a day. Now, again, not every flight will they say not every flight will go into the stack, but there is a potential along the A14 corridor from Cambridge to um, the stack over Huntingdon Racecourse that that is the number of flights that could go through. 
Interestingly, an observer in this house um, came, walked into the room whilst I was on this conference call to um, these people. And when the guy, when a chap from another parish asked about the proposal for increasing the number of flights into um, Luton, the responses, Holly heard these responses and she said, why can they only say, we think so? This is what, shouldn't they have more definite contract uh, proposals that they, facts that they can stand behind? So that gives you a bit of an idea that it's, a, if you ask me, it's a bit wishy-washy and there's no consideration. We've had a reply from that to some questions that we asked before. And basically it's hard luck. I mean, I, I think to sort of summarize things, we would presumably write, I mean, I, I can't see there's any advantage to the planes flying overhead. So no. I don't suppose we would actually support the action. Uh, I, um, it's questionable what we would achieve, but I'm just trying to get a consensus that, um, that we would write a negative response to NETS. Is that right? And I'm, Peter, you're, I'm, you're, I'm assuming that you could help write that. And I'm also I certainly to, could. I'm yeah. also and it would be based on what I've said in that um, document. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that it, perhaps you could provide some insight as to how Nets uh, movements work. Um, yes, maybe... absolutely. Um, I probably, before you finish writing uh, the report, Peter, mm -hmm. maybe we could hook up and have a chat and I can uh, maybe fire a few things across to you that could be included because uh, I'm, I'm totally against this, uh, this holding stack. The holding stack itself isn't an issue it's the run into it that's the issue it's going to come within about about a mile south of the village i think um and although they say 40 percent no sorry 49 percent is going to be following that track 30 percent figures that they're making up at the moment uh may be on shortcuts which won't affect us at all that changes on the day so yeah. i think we are going to be significantly affected uh i think the decibel levels they're quoting somewhere between 50 50 and 60 uh at that altitude as they come over so we will be affected um and another issue on it is the environmental factor um this holding point and and the routing is much further north than it used to be and the extra fuel that are going to be from aircraft coming from the south is just going to be burning a lot of fuel up uh, unnecessarily uh, whereas I think a different uh, plan of positioning these holding... Uh, I, I appreciate that, that Luton does need to expand. How much we don't know at the moment. It depends if they get planning permission from mm. the second terminal. Um, it's still a small airport as such with regards to runway size and aircraft size. However, uh, we're still looking at that 50 to 60 decibels coming across. So various various points on that. Total agreement to uh, say no to it as much as we can do. And happy to hook up sometime before the 5th. And I just also ask that we, we wrote after the last meeting to HGC, CCC, Nats and RMP, didn't we? Yeah. And we have not, we've only had a reply from Nats. Uh, I had a reply from the County Councillor who advised that... Um, their response would be publicly available on their website once their decision was made <laughs> after they've submitted it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, just to, just to pressurise Peter in it, when, I mean, Nicola, you would need to actually submit <coughs> your response, wouldn't you? Yeah. I'm going to, so when would you like the response in by for these, for these two? Well, I mean, sorry, just to go back, are we, are, as a council, are we happy that we're, we, we can delegate um, the actual, uh, text to Peter and it and they would then submit it to Nicola who would um, edit it or whatever and check it's okay as a as a parish council and send it on that's my proposal can I have a second uh, Heather your hands up are you seconding that yeah that's fine right okay council are we all happy that that's our, our proposed route yeah, yeah. fine yeah okay yeah, you can vote yeah. now yeah. <laughs> so, so we'll go with that mode so thank you just to pressurise you, um, when would you like it in by assuming that these two can't write and therefore you need to go through it as a small fine tooth comb to... As soon as possible, given that we've got a deadline of the 5th. Yes. Um, okay. So I'm happy to meet and go through it and we could actually submit it there and then... I just checked my diary. Well, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm free. <laughs> I'm, I'm at, I'm I won't at bother checking mine at the moment. Do afternoons. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's that's yeah. great. 
thank you, thank well, you. Well, send a message. We'll we'll we'll, we'll sort it out between us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, now, item one five six is to uh, review the recent flooding in the village and discuss and decide upon any actions regarding this. Now, I'm going to pass this over to Ian because Ian and I have been communicating, but he's been telling me things, so that's so he's he's uh, I think the one to lead it. Um, I don't know really whether we need to. Well, I, I mean, Ian, presumably you're going to talk about the report that you wrote. Um, there's one of those documents is just a pardon the pun a flow chart which one of the first questions is where did the water come from it's obviously quite an easy one to answer uh, and, move, and, and gets progressively worse from there on um, the other one is that they HCC are going to hold a review um, and I'm just wondering Nicola or whatever whether we can propose that Ian is our contact um, if they should want more information from us um, I'm I did mention this to be in the earlier, just so I'm not actually throwing him in the deep end. Oh gosh, puns mm -hmm. are puns are flowing out, aren't they? Um, <laughs> so if he could be our contact, whether whether just by submitting or as a, a video link, but uh, they are the HCC are going to be taking comments from um, parishes. So I'm going to now pass over to Ian. Perhaps he gives an update of where we where we are. Thank you. I mean the the document that uh, has come our way is this. Um, review scoping document, which I, th I think is very much just for our information rather than for our comment when you read it. So I'm not going to dwell on that unless uh, somebody has any particular questions. Um, which brings us to the report that I've, I've pulled together. Um, there's quite a lot in that. Um, I don't propose to go through it in detail. Um, hopefully you've all had a chance to read it. Um, really... Sorry, yeah, Ian, are you talking about the report for the 23rd, 24th of December? Yeah, yeah. Fine, thank you. Okay. Um, yes, so that's a four-page document. Um, but as I say, a lot of it is just spelling out what has happened. Yeah. Um, you probably saw the weather forecast tonight saying that the combined December, January total that we've just had is the highest that we've had for a hundred years. So no wonder it's a bit soggy at the moment out there. Uh, that's just an additional bit thrown in. So really the bit I would like to concentrate on, if I may, is um, the fifth section suggested actions for the parish council. So there are 10 items there. So let's go through them fairly quickly. The first is to write to the residents whose properties lie adjacent to the water courses. Um, this we did following the floods in 2001. Um, and a lot of people were quite surprised that they indeed did have a responsibility. So um, I think some of those have lapsed and also some of those properties have new residents within them. So that's going to be worthwhile doing. Um, I just stop there. Are yeah. you OK? Uh, I mean, I don't know if Nicola knows or whether you would perhaps go on a survey and find out which house numbers they would be whether I come with you. I mean, there's presumably there's lots of houses that perhaps you wouldn't necessarily know. I mean, I think it may be a case we've got to walk around and make a note of the numbers because there's a lot of houses that, that um, are front ditches. Yes, um, and we do in fact have a letter that was sent out in 2001 so we can okay, sorry. have a look at those and see who they were sent to. But uh, yeah, now I'll go along with you on that one, Graham. We can combine our efforts there. Um, the 5-2, Graham has taken a dead badger out of that culvert, um, <laughs> at least that's what he called it. It's actually a great knot of roots, uh, but it came out in one piece and lying in his uh, wheelbarrow, it did look like a dead badger. It was huge and well done Graham for your efforts there, because that must have taken an awful lot of, uh, a lot of sweat to, uh, to get that out. Uh, it is flowing a little better now. Um, it would have been nice if it was flowing even better still, but uh, there we are. We've done what we can at this stage. Um, 
we have got, as you leave the village on the Gravely Way at the moment, um, many of you will have noticed that there's quite an area, a big puddle on the right hand side. We believe that is being caused because a culvert between the ditch to the north and the ditch to the south has become blocked. Both um, Graham and one of the residents has done some work on there, but there's a lot more needs doing. There's also been already some dialogue with HDC, I believe it is, Nicola, am I right? CCC. Oh, CCC, beg your pardon, um, to uh, look into that. And whereas they've not specified that it's their responsibility, they're hinting that they might do a bit of work on it. I think that's the uh, position there. Um, yeah, the reprofiling of some of the stretches of open ditch along the south side of Gravely Way. Um, it would be nice to do that. That ditch is not perhaps as low in some areas as it could be to allow um, restricted flow. Um, Ian, who would do that? Well, um, possibly the village maintenance person uh, with a little bit of help from, uh, from whoever wishes to do so. I'd give him a hand. Okay. I mean, it's not something that we need a digger in for, put it that way. Okay. It's a relatively um, small ditch. A ridge slip. Yeah. Um, we popped along up to the Five Arch Bridge, and at that point, there is in fact a number of trees that have grown um, and that have now allowed debris to accumulate alongside them. And that restricts the flow from the village from here uh, at that point. So where the St. Ives Road ditch joins Westbrook at Five Arch Bridge. It wouldn't be sufficient to cause a blockage to cause flooding in the village. It would go onto the fields either side, but nevertheless, it's something that is not flowing in the way it should do. So I believe there's already been a bit of dialogue um, with, with county with that, Nicola? The, yeah, they've advised that it's the landowner's responsibility under riparian ownership. Mm. I've got a feeling <laughs> the riparian ownership could be HDC for there because I know they've done some work in the past. So uh, let's, let's have a bit more uh, dialogue on that one, please. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll speak to you on that one. Um, they do say, and I've got this letter from 2002, um, which is in your files, Nicola, which I've been looking through, uh, that there are seven culverts within the village that um, CCC actually attend to on an annual basis. Um, certainly we've identified that one of those is perhaps not flowing quite as smoothly as it could do. So we need to look at that and we also need to just check that they are still doing that annual check that they said they used to. Five seven, we need to give a bit of thought for that ditch just outside Hilton House. Some of you may be aware that um, a villager actually ended up in the bottom of that ditch uh, on the, the 24th. Um, could we improve it by giving better demarcation of the ditch? Uh, there's not much room to play with, but we need to investigate what we can possibly do there, if anything. And there are a number of culverts around the villages that I've seen that don't flow, uh, some of which I don't know where they come from. And there's a couple that I've mentioned there, uh, one outside, which, which seems to take water from Checkers Croft into uh, the ditch just outside of uh, Kidman's Farm Cottage. Um, There were five, nine, a number of residents who reported vehicles traveling far too quickly through the floods, um, causing bow waves. Certainly uh, the owners of uh, Hilton House remarked that uh, an awful lot of vehicles were doing that. And there were one or two people I spoke to further along Gravely Way who uh, backed up what, what was said, just far too quickly. 
five pen. You may have seen that um, there has been some work done by the farmer in the ditches that go along the south side of Gravely Way out up towards the White Bridge. Um, there are three fields between Tithe Lane and the White Bridge. The first is the horse field where the horses are kept. And I was talking to the lady in there the other day and she has been told by the farmer that he was hoping to get into that field and do some work in that ditch. He has already done some work in the two fields uh, between the horse field and the White Bridge. So that's going to increase the rate of flow along there. So if we were to have another 2001 event where a lot of water came over the top of the uh, field edges at the White Bridge and flowed down the Gravely Way, uh, then that would get into those reprofile ditches and would arrive with us a little quicker. So that's just one. Uh, those are the items that uh, I believe we could do as a parish council. I hope they all make sense. Are there any questions about those or the other bit of the report that I didn't in fact uh, dwell on? Have you got any questions? Oh, Sharon? Yes, please, Sharon. Um, just to mention the culvert outside my house, yep. there's two tubes that go under the uh, under church end. Yeah. Um, and the water flows in both of them, but it's a trickle on the left one when it comes out, ah. and the right one flows really fast. So some somewhere underneath the road, there must be a blockage. Um, right. So I was going to just raise that, and, and I just wondered, I mean, there is starting uh, to be a big crack across the road above those yeah. two uh you know, pipes. Okay. Um, so I just wonder if that's something we need to report to H um, CCC or the yeah. You know, just the the highway maintenance people may well need to just patch up the road. Actually, there is there are quite a few big potholes as well where the water's washed away. I mean, Church End actually at times was worse than the actual Ford. So right. Um, that culvert is one of the seven that CCC are supposed to do on an annual basis. Right. So we can certainly remind them that uh, we have seen a problem there. Uh, the other one that um, Graham has mentioned to me is the one at the entrance to Tithe Close, isn't it, Graham? You said that that was um, possibly not flowing as well as it could do. I just want to pick up on Sharon's comment. You said left-hand one. Is that the one nearest to Ford? Or yes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, the one... Uh, the one nearest sort of um, oh, stuff. Potter yeah. Road. The Potter Road, yeah. So the one, the right, the one that's nearest the Ford flows really quickly. Okay. No, I, the I, other I, one, yeah. Okay. No, so left, you, looking from your house. Yeah. That's fine. yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, um, that that right one does tend to get the bigger volume of water going through it on a, an everyday basis, doesn't it? Yeah. So it, it may well have been flushed out a little more cleanly than the left hand one. Yeah. I do wonder whether it needs some sort of grid in front of it to just stop the debris, you know, blocking it because it does get, you know, there's, I've seen pieces of wood floating down there. And of course, it's been too deep to get in and grab it. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, Kieran, you had your hand up. Are you still? Yeah. Just uh, suggesting to you, Ian, when you come to try and identify the properties with repairing rights, yep. um, obligations rather, 5.1. Uh, the village map quite clearly identifies anybody whose property whose title deed is against water. So Ooh. it could be a nice quick win for you. This one? Okay. That's the one. Ah, uh, right, thank you. Good. Okay, um, now sort of moving, moving on, obviously there's no particular proposal tonight on what actions we do. So um i think we can sort of cope for the time being but maybe we can sort of just look at that report in the month to come and maybe yeah. we'll come up with specific proposals at the next meeting or so um one of my, my questions is what thoughts on tithe lane because that seems to be a bit of a mess uh, whether we can 
try and get some negotiations and get it reprofiled so that it is a bit more usable um, when it gets wet. Um, and the other question is whether we publish this report. I don't know whether anybody else has been approached by parishioners who feel that a report may be required by their insurance company. Um, I don't know, Nicola, have you had anything? Nothing. Okay. Well, I think for the time being, then we we don't publish. Um, Could we put it on the website or make it available? Well, that's that's my risk. I don't I don't think we should do that at the moment. Why not? Well, because some of the information in there is a bit sensitive. Um, until we've spoken to the people who have had flooding and stuff, I don't I don't think we should publicise it too greatly. Why is it uh, sensitive? Well, if it's if it's damage to yourself, I don't know whether you want to publicise that you've had that damage. It's like it's like it's like a personal injury, isn't it? It's it's something that's happened to you personally, and I don't know whether it's uh, advisable for us to publicise it to the world unless. But we're not publicising. We're not publicising specific houses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The report doesn't do that. It's very uh, generic mm -hmm. in its statement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what's the general thought? I mean, I could put Nicola on the spot as well to decide whether we've got a data protection issue. Whether we just... If we're not naming any specific properties or people, then you should mm -hmm. be fine. Okay. You are saying Gravely Way appeared to be worse detected. So, um, yeah. People who, um, all those properties got to be insured, you know, whether this information out in the public domain might be a, a problem. If you were considering selling your property along Gravely Lay Way, you wouldn't necessarily appreciate. Um, a big article writing how the what the problem is down there until there's a resolution yeah, to it. Exactly. Mm. yeah. That's, that's what i'm that's what i'm thinking yeah well i i my thinking was kind of the flip side of that saying that if i saw something like that it might make me look at the deeds of my property i might look at my insurance i might be a bit more uh focused on well, where do I stand in this? And then not to be surprised when I get um, the the uh, results saying, well, it's all your fault. <laughs> well, I mean, I was one of my notes here. I was wondering whether we could email it so that we would email the report to those those affected as a first step, rather than um, publicising it to the world. Whether we email it to the households who were most affected, or or whether we send it to a couple of people that we know don't gravely well and see what they think. I just think that we might get ourselves in hot water if we mm. uh, if we publicise it widely. I would engage with people along Gravely Way first of all. Okay, okay. Well, we, we know. Well, well, certainly a couple of us, a couple have offered to help. We know people down there, so I think we can have informal chats with them and see how they feel. I think that's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to take it on. Um, okay, so that's my proposal. That there's two things really. One is that we receive the report from Ian. Or the re Report that Ian's done. Um, can I have a seconder for that? That we receive it. Anybody going to? Oh, Ed, you're going to second uh -oh. it. Now? Fine. Um, all those in favour of receiving the report? Can I show it, hands? Report, Ian. Thank you. Are you? Yes. Ready? Thank you, Ian. Yeah, and Graham and his son. <laughs> you, you do get a vote, Ian. Are you for? Oh yes, definitely. Yeah, you put his, you put his <laughs> He arrived late. Put his finger up late. Um, okay, so that's fine. The second thing is that we engage with token residents in Gravely Way and see what their feelings are with that report. Before. Well, I think it's a good report. It would be a shame if it doesn't get out there. A lot of people are asking questions about the flooding and, you know, it, you know there's some good bit of work done here. There's some good information for the village. It seems yes. a shame for it not to be made available to people. Yes, I'm just aware that... As someone who's told his house on Gravely Way as this was going on, it, it was irrelevant to me because the flood report yeah. already shows where it's flooded historically, which is worse than this. So mm. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Right. Just for the sake of a couple of words, it may, it may be easier i mean i'm not saying we wouldn't publicize but i just think it'd be fine better to just engage in conversation and then we can report it at the next meeting and publicize it accordingly so that's my proposal is that we engage with the gravely way people not all of them just a token and then bring it back to council for um effectively a publication can i have a second of that action please anybody oh Ian, uh, Ed, you're seconding that all in favor mm -hmm. show of hands one two three four five six seven uh, seven, it's eight, isn't it? Eight, four. Um, and are you abstaining or against? 
I'm against. Against. Okay, so that's that's eight one. Thank you very much. That's good. Okay, so that that concludes the the flood uh, report. Thank you very much. Um, let's just get rid of that. Pop back to the agenda. Isn't it great when two streams work in unison? It's brilliant. <laughs> Um, okay, this is to review the response to the recent HGV petition and discuss and decide upon LHI separate submission and presentation, including who will represent the council at the virtual meeting. Now, again, in supporting documents, you've seen how this is going to work this year. Um, so take it a step at a time. We're obviously looking for a, a representative to, to attend that meeting virtually, but we also need to discuss the response we got to that petition. Um, I mean, from its point of view, uh, uh, just to go back on there, unless anybody wants to help me out by uh, report on. Uh, 43% of the electors agreed, um, responded rather, and 416, 39% of all residents. Yeah. I mean, obviously it wasn't uh, maybe as big as we'd hoped in terms of numbers. I don't know what we actually hoped for. But I mean, having having done that survey, um, I think we need to at least put it in with the LHI. I would have thought we could have put in the numbers. I'm not sure whether we put in the percentage or whether we just say that uh, um, 367 people were in favour of this action. Anybody, any thoughts on how we use that petition information? Discuss. I think we should use it. I think um, over half of the people responding is really good. It's more than you get in an election normally. Well, we got significantly less than half, didn't we? 43? 43%, I think. Yeah. I can't remember what the election figures are, but I think it's about 40% take part in the general election. Yes, okay. Well, okay, well, that's the question. Do we put it in as a percentage or do we put it in as a number? I think number. Number? Number. Anybody else? I mean, numbers, number sounds more impressive, I must admit. Yeah. I think, uh, okay. Um, there's, there's two big questions, aren't there? Because we've got to submit 500 words to the LHI in mm -hmm. support of our bid. And mm -hmm. then we've got to choose somebody to say something for three minutes at this 15 <laughs> minutes, whatever. Yep. So rather than deciding what we're going to say and do now, we need to decide who that person is and who's going to write the 500 words. <laughs> yes, Indeed. I agree. Indeed. But I mean, I think also we the, the first part of it is how we use the information from the petition. And that's the bit I'm trying to sort of sort out at the moment, because that would be down to the council. I mean, obviously, the, the individual who's presenting our case would be writing the report with maybe help from whoever. Um, but really, the petition was sent out. I want, I'm want i trying to get a feeling of whether we put in the numbers, the percentage. I presume, Nicola, just to while people think about that, we would have to submit that in the 500 words because we've submitted our paperwork. Yes, yeah, well, there's no other vehicle to submit any more information. No. Um, okay. So you've got the feasibility study this afternoon as well. Um, yes. It was added to Dropbox very late. Yes, mm. yes. That's, that's what you're thinking. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, so kind of a, a, I'm proposing that we, uh, that in our 500 words, <clears throat> we, we put in there somewhere that um, 367 of our electorate support this action. That's my proposal. Can I have a second of that, please? I would propose 416 of the residents, if you're going to use numbers. Okay, well, I'll take mine first, and that's, you've got, you've got two options. Okay, so you've heard the two options. Can I have a second of for the 367 um, electorals, electorates? Can I have a second of that option? No? Okay. Well, then, go bigger number. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So we had the so we'll go with Heather's option that we have a number of respondents was 416 yeah. to go into 500 work. Have a second of that, please. Heather, second. It. All in favor? A raise of hands. Ed, yep. you're not. You are been there. Been there. No, I've been there. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so, that's, that's go all favor. so the 500 word document would have to please include 416 responses are in favor of this action. There we then come on to the virtual presentation, which is on the 24th of February. It's for a solo effort. Uh, in, nobody else can attend um, via Zoom. So it's a one person show. Um, other people can watch online if they want to via, via uh, YouTube. Um, so it's really a case of who's available. 
This will be the 24th of February at 11.45. Conveniently, we are the first one after a break, so that'd be nice. Um, so, I mean, Anne, you've presented one before. Peter, you presented yeah. one most recently. Yeah, I'm, I've just checked my diary. I am free that day. If, You're free um, again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, does anybody else have any have any feelings about whether they they got the passion for it or whatever? Um, I mean, I would have liked to do it, but I'm not free that day. Oh, okay. Well, Peter, you. Right. Sort of, <laughs> we, um, I could I could do it too for sure. Okay. Okay. So they got two nominations. Um, while we think about that, how would do we want the 500 word thing written? Would we leave it to the, the individual or would it be passed around? I mean, Nicola, would you have to be involved with it? I imagine you would. You can only delegate decisions to uh, an officer or a committee. So mm -hmm. the, the decision would have to rest with either an officer or a committee. Um, and we've so got the Hilton yeah. Traffic Group, don't we? But yeah, but that's not a committee. Not they're not a committee, are they? They're a working group. No, they're a working party. Yes. So, so, but can I you... ask a question, please? Yeah, please do. Help the 500 out. words is supplementary to this document that you sent out today. The feasibility is it, mm -hmm. Nicola, or will it go on the feasibility, or is no, it just a statement of 500 words? The the feasibility study is generated by CCC. CCC yeah. Um, so we the, the the 500 words would get submitted <sighs> to the committee that are making the decision. A supplementary to the the explanation that whoever the representative is standalone document if there is a technical issue on the day the 500 words get read out as the submission right yes and i say 500 words is it's pushing it for three minutes um mm. so that would be good i'm just still not, not entirely sure how we would write that 500 words presumably nicola you'd be happy to write it with the elected um rep Presentative. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. And then would the rest of the council see it? Would we get involved? Would we call a meeting? Or would we be happy to delegate it to you two? Thoughts on that council? Would I mean, it be we were, appropriate for the people who got the petition together to meet with Nicola to come up with what goes into the 500 words, circulate it with everybody, get Nicola's approval, and then the, the one person presents it? Sounds okay. good to me. Good idea. Right, yeah. That was yep. you and me, wasn't it, Nicola? Yeah. I think it was you and me, wasn't it? You did that? Okay. No, no the, petition, the petition. The petition. The petition. and me and... Kieran and Anne. The petition. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. That's, uh, the, the more numbers are, the better, certainly. So that'd be the four of you? Yeah. Fine. Okay. Uh, are we... I'll propose that then, that the, the four people who wrote the petition letter uh, get together and write the 500 words. Um, can I have a second of that, please? Oh, I've got a, it was a, a tie, but I'll get Ian because he hasn't done it yet. Um, okay, Ian, so you're seconding. All in favour of that action, please? Show of hands. Brilliant. Thank you very much. That's good. Uh, so if you could do that with consultation, Nicola, um, and just circle it to us for information. We'll need to do that pretty quickly, it seems to me. Um, Nicola, what's your submission? Obviously, the 24th is the actual day. Seven days before. Uh, yeah, it's the 18th is your day to submit the, the deadline for the 500 words. The 18th? Mm -hmm. Okay, so six, six days before. Okay, that's fine. Um, now, can we vote on who we think um, should should do it? Both Peter and Anne have, have put their names forward. Um, difficult. Difficult. Well, I mean, <laughs> unless you... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm. I mean, I don't know how you got on, Peter, with the Zoom last time. Did you get on all right with it? Yeah, it's not. It's not an issue, is it? Because um, it's like going to the Nats thing. It's going like doing the last one for the um, traffic order. It's just mm -hmm. a case of um, being non-emotional and stating the facts. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. But you have, and there's a 500 word document. That, you know, is, that's going to be the basis of what you say. That's true, because there's the four of you actually writing it, so it's just, just a presentation. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, I don't it doesn't matter much who presents it if the 500 words are agreed with the four of us. Yes, that's true. That's true. Well, I'm, I'm going to suggest that, or I'm going to suggest that Peter is is our first, and with Anne as our as our standby. Um, are we okay with that? Can I take a vote on that? Um, so I'll propose that Peter is the rep. 
that presents on 24th. Um, can I have a second of that option, please? No. Oh, <laughs> okay. I'll get my coat. <laughs> no, it's all right. Like buses. Um, bear in mind there's an option. So all in favour of that particular, of Peter as a, as a rep, can I have a show of hands, please? One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's fine. Carried. Um, now, Rob and Sharon and Anne, I think you um, didn't vote. So, uh, abstentions? Okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yes. Yeah, oh, so, and Anne. Okay. So, Sharon, Rob, and Anne are abstaining from that option. Fine. Thank you very much. Um, Nicola, point of order there. Am I supposed to do against before abstentions? Yes. Sorry. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll try and bear that in mind. Thank you. Okay, so I think we're okay on that. So if you four can meet and do your 500 words. Can I great. just ask about the parishioners question about, has anyone consulted the main HGV users, easy Mick, George and Hanson, and have we got any data that we could include about their journeys? I know Andy has. He's asked some of them. Um, oh, there's no harm in, well, presumably, we could ask we'd Nicola. like to use it if it's positive in our direction if they're just going through Hilton rather than an interim route mm -hmm. um I don't really know um shall the four of us ask Andy and then we can get the information back yeah, yeah if you if there's this letter that's fine this is something that's you know it's, it's information to hand then that's fine good I mean if you're short of information let us know and then we can set out whatever um, responses we can get I think it's important. It's a very, obviously a very important submission. Anyway, um, thank you. Uh, moving on to the next item. Let's get rid of that one. Going back to the agenda. Okay, this is next item 158 to review the responses from Highways England regarding the direction of traffic or the directing of traffic on the sat nav applications. Now, not a lot to really be said at this point is that you've seen the correspondence we've had with Highways England. Unfortunately, at the moment, we only seem to be, have, have got to the communications officer and you would have seen the responses. Um, if it's one thing Highways England are good at, it's communicating. Uh, so we're getting some pretty sort of fast responses, but they're not really uh, fessing up to the problem that we're, that we're experiencing. So, um, I really, I've, I've got down here as a proposal that we just carry on communicating with them in the hope that we can get some kind of a, a acceptance that we are getting more traffic as a result of the problems. Anne, far away. Um, in addition, could we not go directly to Google Maps and ask them to bear in mind the issue that they create for it? Do something about it. Can't imagine that would be successful, but I mean, is that? Um, I mean, the, the response we got from four to eight was that they said that they, that they, or I was England, said that they couldn't, they couldn't affect what Google Maps are doing. I kind of feel that if Highways England can't affect them, we would have even less chance. But I mean, it's worth a try, isn't it? Is there a letter? I think we want to know when with this because it's a road and traffic's allowed to use it at the moment. Mm. Oh, it's exactly. But the point we're trying to make is that the modelling um, didn't indicate that. Uh, the fact is that they're they're directing it away from these new roads to try and pick up the A1. Are they primarily the A1 is the problem. Well, we are in the middle of a, uh, a crossroads, which um, uh, didn't, I don't think it showed on the modelling. So that's what we're trying to get, is that there are more traffic movements as a result of this new road system. Um, and the point that the parishioner made is that it's going to get worse when the new A428 is built, because obviously access onto the 428 is going to be a lot easier than it currently is. So it's a situation that's not going to improve. Um, but I mean, uh, I don't know whether we, is, has anyone got any thoughts about whether we do contact Google Maps? Got nothing to lose, have we? Indeed. Okay, then. That's the, that's, are you going to propose that, Anne? I'll propose that for sure. I'm, okay. I'm happy to do it. Okay. Uh, well, you won't be doing it, but you'll be proposing that that's, the action is done by Nicola. Um, can we have a second that? Or I'll have to second that. Okay, that's that's the, the two of us. Anybody wish to... Um, sorry, how many in favour of the action? Let's give it a try. Okay, so 
is that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, uh, against. Uh, Kieran's against. Okay, so that's that's eight one. I think. Thank you, Arch. If I get the numbers, do shout out because it's quite hard to see all the hands going up. That's fine. So that's the first action. The second action, I think, is just to continue with the correspondence that we are that we are doing in the hope that we do get some kind of admission that yes, maybe there are a few more traffic movements as a result of this, and that they. With one of the one of the actions we did ask for is that we do need some signs on the new A14 to direct cars to the A1 South. I don't know if anyone's done that. There are no signs on the 14 that goes past us directing you onto the A1 South. Um, it's a very difficult manoeuvre. So uh, hopefully, at the very least, we might get that, that put in. It's a bit of a, a physical thing that, that, that they could do. OK, I think we've covered that one. Yeah, looking around, no hands. Good, thank you much. Um, so To review the response from CCC regarding the traffic modelling post A14 and Southern Bike. Now, this is the re to review the letter. We sent a letter to um, Cambridge County Council. Uh, we had a response. Um, and again, not too sure where we go from here other than to continue the correspondence because we're expecting a reply from CCC. Uh, Ian Bates did ask for more information, which I think we can supply. Is that right, Peter and Nicola? You can provide us a we know that he had a meeting last week with uh, one of his officers regarding this, so we're just awaiting the the correspondence that will hopefully come out of that meeting. Okay. Again, this is all to all to try and get some undertaking that they will monitor the traffic levels um, as part of the agreement before the uh, 14 was started. That's that's the objective there. Uh, okay. Right. Moving on. This is hopefully a formality. This is item 160, review the traffic regulation order application for the amendment to Mere Way. Now, I hope you're all aware we're aware, aware of Mere Way. Wow, it's quite hard, isn't it? Um, this it always used to be where the white barky dog used to be. Um, when we, you get, travel across the fields to Hemingford, um, it seems to be a bit of an error that the road leading up to it is a bridleway. The, leading, the road leading from it is a bridleway, but the bridge apparently is open to all traffic. So um, this is a, just to sort of finish off the route to make sure that um, cars are excluded from it. It should be a formality. Uh, I've proposed that we do nothing. Um, that's my proposal. Noted. And it, or noted. Yeah, I mean, I think we should thank them for their, for their application, for their information, but it will just be a, a noted response. Um, can I have a second for that action, please? Okay, Kira, seconded. Okay, uh, all in favor? Raising of hands. Yeah, are you in favour or are you not? Uh, I'm okay. going to abstain on this one. Yeah, I don't sorry. know enough about it. I should just be fine. Okay, so that's eight in favour. Sharon, were you in favour? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Mr. And Annette is an abstention because of lack of information. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Now this is uh, item one six one. To review the decision at the recent CCC Highways and Transport Committee that the NMU route from Hilton to Fenstanter will not be included in the first round of funding and discuss and decide upon any actions. Now, this was uh, one that Heather spotted. Um, we didn't know much about it, and um, you would have seen the uh, document that Heather's put into. Yes, well done, Heather. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, Heather, far away. I've got a few notes here. Yes, um, I just happened to be looking at the County Council website for the Highways um, and Transport Committee meeting and discovered they had had a meeting and that NMUs were on the agenda. So my first question was, should we have been told that the NMUs were on the agenda and going to be discussed? Um, and when I asked the question of the Council, the answer was just, well, the papers are out and it's up to you just to peruse them every so often to find out. So the answer was no, we shouldn't have been told. and. Um, we just need to keep an eye on the council website, which was yeah. quite disappointing, really. Um, it does say there is going to be a second. Oh, so um, there were five schemes, I think, that were approved, 11 that were up for um, um, discussion. And of course, ours was one of the six that wasn't. It did say that there are going to be um, a second round of delivery um, in the next financial year. And so I then asked, what can we do to push the NMU forward um, between us and Fenstanton? 
And one suggestion was that we ought to actually liaise with Pensanton, Pensanton Parish Council as well and tell them that we want this and ask them to come on board and work with us to actually get an NMU between the two villages. Um, just to interrupt you, Heather, we have done that. Okay. So they, they know about it and uh, um, yeah, they see it as a, a sensible way forward. So I think they, we could probably encourage them to be a bit more active in that discussion with us and to present a case going to county council as well to get that um, so it's more apparent that there are two villages that are very keen for this to happen. Um, and then the third point, um, oh, there's the bit in the middle about there's the reduction of the volume of traffic and other ways like healthy streets, which we might be able to use for the LMI bid when we have to do that 500 word documentation document. And then my final thing was there was also a proposed consultation for footpaths and cycle routes, which is coming out. And the document doesn't include Hilton at all and all the maps exclude Hilton. So when I asked about that, um, the response was, well, it's a consultation. You need to get involved with the consultation in spring 21 and make sure Hilton is included on it. So that's the information I've had back. So, so we need to sign up to be part of that. Well, we should be being consulted, but equally we need to keep an eye on the County Council website to find out when this consultation happens. Can, can we liaise with them from now on in? Yeah. I mean, you've, it appears that you've been in, in communication with Ian, Ian Bates, is that right? right. Yes. Okay. I sent this to Ian and he came back yes. to me. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I, yeah. But the biggest thing is to reopen those discussions with Penn Stanton about the NMU, first of all, and then respond to the consultation when it comes out. Mm. Okay, so is that that will be a summary of these documents of, yes. of this document? Yes. Okay. Well, I, I don't see any harm in in. I mean, obviously, Fen Stanton is probably our nearest neighbour, um, and it would be good to have communication with them anyway on all sorts of subjects. So I don't see any harm in in uh, communicating with well, Fen Stanton. We've already, as I've said, um, I already spoke to uh, Fen Stanton Parish Council members um, about the NMU and linking up with what they were doing. Mm -hmm. So we have names and people who are sympathetic to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm happy just to re-engage with them and copy Nick and take okay. it from there. Okay, yeah, I think that's, that's okay. You're happy with that, Nicola? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Kevin much. and Roy both attended the open meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yes, fine. Um, okay, so that's the proposal that we communicate to Stanton to try and get their feelings on the NMU. Peter? Mm -hmm. Questions, please, if I may. And when yeah. um, when we when the original application went in for the NMU, we you mentioned Fen Stanton were on board with it at that point as well. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, so there's a slice of words that can be lifted and put into whatever needs to be resubmitted, isn't there? Saying this yeah, was because we said that we would link up with the work that they've uh, already done on yeah. improving cycle routes across to the. Um, the bus, the guided busway. So, um, it, um, yeah. It's so CCC, been... no, they've had it in front of them. So yeah, yeah use that again. Um, and with regards to this um, consultation that, um, Heather, you've been told that um, Hilton yeah. should make sure it's involved with, um, should we not be writing to CCC now and saying we wish to be involved in this consultation, please, yeah. rather than waiting for right. it to appear on a website and for it to come up in between meetings and a deadline that's too tight and all that sort of thing? That would be a really good idea, Peter. Yeah. Do we know who we'd need to write to? Um, I would imagine the it was the Highways and Transport Committee who actually approved the consultation document. Mm -hmm. So it would be the clerks attached to that meeting. Yeah, I think we, that would be my suggestion is that we write now and say, Hilton wants to be involved in this footpaths consultation as you appear to have missed us out of all the documentation or whatever, yeah. the maps and everything like that. Yeah. If that's all right, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, that's fine, of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, we need to sort of get in the conversation. I mean, Nicola can, um, if, if 
she has trouble finding the name. Obviously, Heather <laughs> has been dealing with this. But we can start the communication that way. Um, and Anne will uh, re-engage with the people that she knows in Penn Stanton, again, yeah. Cobham and Nicola. So that's a proposal that we engage with Penn Stanton and that we engage with CCC to be notified. I think we can do the two as, as, as one proposal. Um, and it's on two matters with CCC, isn't it? We want them to engage, we want to be involved in the footpaths discussion, and we also want them to uh, in, make sure that they have us in the next round of NMU discussions. Uh, okay, I missed that one. Is it also, I mean, obviously there is footpaths. Are we expecting the footpaths to be changed then? I mean, can you? Well, that's they... a consultation they're having, and that, if I got it right from what Heather was saying, that when she asked, when she looked into the footpaths thing, Hilton aren't mentioned at all. Right. And it was the feedback from the county councillor was, well, you've got to make sure Hilton's um, involved. Sure. So, yeah. so let's write to them and say, we want to be involved. Yeah. Don't, you've ignored us so far. It, and also with NMUs, mm -hmm. it's not gone in the first one. And it, it says that um, there's a second round of, um, discussion at some point later in the year well let's write to them and say how disappointed we were we weren't included in the first one and we would like to make sure that this is considered in the second one as top of their list okay i'm just slightly confused that obviously we mentioned about a feasibility study for an, an nmu i'm not sure what we've done as far as footpaths go um, it's, it's the same thing in you. this case graham a non-motorized user includes feet it does, but I mean, a footpath doesn't include an NMU. No, it's two different issues, Graham. So the NMU oh, is a specific pardon. one between Hilton and Fenstanton. Sorry, I, I missed the first part, sorry. The NMU is the specific one between yes. Hilton and Fenstanton. Yes, yes, yes. That's yes, yes. one thing. Yes. And then there's also going to be a new consultation about footpaths and cycle routes across the county. And we want to be involved in that consultation. But we haven't submitted any sort of footpath we want, have we? This is this is, is no. this a general. Yeah. But do, I mean, I, I'm slightly confused. Let me know. Do we know what the, what that footpath discussion will be? Oh, there's maps of East Cambridgeshire, now South South Cambridgeshire, all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And my concern at the moment is that Hilton is excluded from all those maps. It's um, a separate. And we want point to make sure we are included. Right, but are we, I mean, are we expecting more footpaths to go in or what? I don't quite know. Don't what... know. It's a we don't know, it's a constant. <laughs> I would guess. Basically, what we want them to do is not ignore this okay. part of Cambridgeshire. Okay. Okay. Just to be involved in, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't submitted anything, we just want to be involved in the consultation. Yes. Yes. Right. right, fair enough. Is anyone else okay on that? Yep. Good, okay. So, uh, that's a proposal that we'd want to be involved in those, in those discussions. Correct. Nicola, have you got enough from the discussions to be able to do that. Yeah, so we're going to write to the uh, High Risk and Transport Committee, uh, ask to be included in the footpath consultation and also ensure that uh, we're included in the second round of funding. Um, and Anne is going to engage with the FPC councillors regarding the NMU. Brilliant. That's the proposal. Can I have a second of that, please? Heather's seconding it. Okay, all in favour of show of hands? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Brilliant. Nine. Thank you very much. That's great. Super. Um, so we can then move on. Do item that's that one. Item one six two. Receive an update regarding the Huntington District Council infrastructure levy fund and discuss and decide upon any actions. Now you've seen the um, we would have seen the document that was submitted or came through from HDC about what was required for a, a, a SIL application. Um, oh, why have we gone on there? I don't want that. Yeah. Anybody wish to sort of comment on where we go from here? Because my my understanding is that I would think we'd have difficulty in getting it accepted. Why? Because it talks about it's an infrastructure levy which is a, a grant that is done to help with development. Um, and as Hilton hasn't got any development, we would have to, again, as I see it, tie up with somebody like Finn Stanton, how we could help with their development. Um, the, uh, the, the, if I read this correctly, the pavilion is the most obvious. Yeah. Um, 
And maybe this, as a pavilion work group are meeting on Wednesday, perhaps we could just take this and run with it, unless there's any other projects that we can think of. Well, I, so I'm just wanting to just bear in mind that I don't know what the chances are, even though the lady who Nicola's been talking to said, yeah, no problem, do talk to me, whatever. The, the paragraph that I'm, I'm reading from here is that it can still can be used to increase the capacity of existing infrastructures, i.e. the pavilion, uh, or repair, if needed to support the needs arising from development. So it's effectively, you know, you've got development and so we're going to improve the, the lot for those people who are coming in. Sharon, did you have a question? Yeah, I think it absolutely will be perfect for the restoration of the pavilion because it's about talking about repairing um, and increasing the capacity of, of existing infrastructures. Um, and, and actually, if you read sort of further into it, it, is, it does talk about um, other villages. Um, so that apparently there are other villages that have used this SIL application to fund pavilion restorations. And, um, you know, with massive amounts, I think another village has applied for like 1.2 million for a, an a NMU. So I absolutely think we, we should not miss this opportunity, especially now the deadline has been um, extended, hasn't it? Hmm. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, I, I did take on board your point there, Kieran, that, oh, sorry, Heather. Can we put in two SIL applications? Because the NMU application going from Fenstanton to Hilton would meet the, the development in Fenstanton. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, as you say, we are the uh, Pavilion Working Group is meeting this week, so we could just discuss that one. I mean, um, just to uh, help me out here, I mean, the SIL doesn't need to put into, is it April? Anybody got spring? Yeah, it's um. It says you should hear from us again in April twenty twenty one. Okay, so we've got a, a month or so to just to sort of polish our polish our case. Uh, so if we bear those two in mind, that would be the, possibly the NMU. Whether we get any any feedback from CCC, um, yeah. and whether where, how we can present the the pavilion as a as a an infrastructure gain for local development. <laughs> No, that's something we can consider. Okay. Um, so do we need a group set up for the NMU or is there a group already that can also work with that proposal? I think the NMU was mostly Anne, wasn't it, Anne? And Ian. Uh, yeah. Ian? And Ian, sorry. Yes, I was going to say. And Rob. And Rob. I just remember Anne did lots of presentations about it, didn't she? Yes. She kept the yeah. council well informed. And we had, we had uh, members of the Hilton Traffic Group as well. So Lisa Millard. Was involved, for mm. example, and Andy and Ken and. Can we reconvene that group then to work with the yeah. NMU? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. How much would you apply for? Do you know? Out of interest. Um, I think somewhere in the dimmer distant, we've had numbers from the county council as to what it would cost to uh, to create the footpath, and I know mm. Ian Bates is very au fait with them. Um, the price per mile, that kind of thing. So we can put, uh, we can find that out. It was over two hundred thousand pounds, wasn't it? I think oh, yes, to way, build over, it. way over. Yeah. Uh, no. So the the question was, would, did you have any idea of how much you would apply for for a sill grant for it? Well, no, not until I looked at those numbers and found out from the county what what um, how they approach it in terms of actual build. Mm. Where okay. it was left um, before COVID, etc. Uh, was that the next step for our NMU, having done the feasibility study, was that they would do a more detailed study that would then enable them to price it. Yeah. So yes. I don't know whether they've done that. Well, yeah, because they sort of just dismissed it, didn't they? Without, yeah, don't very know. disappointing. They well, haven't it, had any more information about whether they've done more with it or not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting to see the the five NMUs that were granted, sort of see what sort of value they were, um, and value for money or you know, whatever, whatever they got. Um, that was that was quite interesting. They they did put the numbers in for those ones, but certainly, I mean, that's the two proposals. And obviously, the pavilion lot can look at that one. Um, 
do we need to propose that the NMU working group reconvenes with a view to a SIL submission? I think we probably would. Yeah. So that's, that's the proposal that um, the, the NMU working group gets together and sees how they can progress it to a SIL application. Yeah. Um, can I have a second of that, please? And seconding, all in favour? Show of hands. Great. Okay, thank you much. That's super. Can I join that group, please? Yes, please. <laughs> Work, working group, it's fine. Um, okay. okay. Um, also, can I just check who's who's now in the pavilion group? Because um, Sarah uh, Partridge was on it. So actually... We're kind of one short on the pavilion working group, aren't we? We're one oh, short. <laughs> Happy to jump on that one. Well Lovely. done. Thank you, Ed. Happy to install the kitchen. Well, yeah. <laughs> Is it still there? Yes. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's still there. Good, good. Um, I think I think the guarantee is still still in in, in the operation as well. Fifteen year guarantee, I think. <laughs> uh, let's get back onto the agenda, Whiteson. Diddly, right, uh, item 163, to receive an update from the parish plan review working group and discuss and decide upon any actions. Now, um, this, I presume, uh, what have we got on here? I just... Don't know. Uh, summary of parish plan proposals. Yeah, we've got, the, we've, got the, right, we've got the questionnaire and we've got the reasoning behind that. Now, um, we've all seen that. Um, what's come back from the working group? Are we all happy? Um, yeah. There's a couple of things that I'm Just a bit... One issue, if I may. Um, there's a question here, would uh, people like to see the Parish Council put a car electric charger point in? <coughs> I think before we write that, we really ought to look at the feasibility of doing it before we ask the village if they want it. Why? because it might be completely unfeasible. I think we need to know a site, the cost, who's paying for the electricity, if it's a company that's going to install it, where do they, where they're going to put it, um, you know, how's, uh, just how it's going to be, the feasibility of it, really. I just think as a parish council, going out and asking the village, would you like this? And we have no way of doing it. That doesn't really seem very sensible. On the other hand, it might be that people don't want it at all because people charge their cars outside their houses. Mm. I mean, I think we, we're not saying we're going to do everything that you ask. We're asking what people's interests are uh, and how they how they would like things to progress in the future. Um, and you know, then as a parish council, we can decide what we can do uh, and look around to see if we can source help or support from elsewhere for those things that we can't do. But I don't think we should not ask a question just in case we can't do something. I mean, there's plenty of information around about the cost of uh, chargers. I can look up what we paid for ours. Um, and they're not that difficult to install, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, and there are grants available. I'm not sure what they are these days uh, to help with that. That's, that's okay if you're prepared to give the electricity for free, but if you want to ha have a payment system for it, that's a different ball game. Right. Sure, it's more complex, I accept that, but it's still, you know, if people in the village say, gosh, I think that would be a great idea, then that gives us, if you like, the permission uh, to go and explore the feasibility of doing it. Go okay. back on a comment you made earlier, Anne. In business, you wouldn't get away of promising something that you couldn't deliver or but suggesting nobody, something. Nobody's promising, you can't nobody's wouldn't it be better to find anything. out whether you can do it first? But nobody's promising anything. Well, you're in making an inference. You're making an inference. Oh, I think uh, there's a balance, isn't there? You can't yeah. go and find out every opportunity you might do before you go and ask people whether they want it. But equally, you don't want to give people the impression that this is going to happen if they just say yes. So I think yeah. there's a there's probably exactly, a balance yeah. between these two arguments. Hmm. It's a big commitment. I mean, um, HTC can't, or CCC can't even get the ones in St. Ives working, can they? And they've been out in the car park there for five years. Don't know. I don't Just um, 
outside of the in the cattle yard uh, market car park there are two or there were two i don't know if it's down to one now electric charging point and they have not been working since the day they were installed well they did once the purpose of the questionnaire is to find out what villagers want it's not to um it's just so that we can get a sense of where we're going in the future, sort of five year, 10 year plan of where we're going and what we're trying to deliver. Um, and this is just one of those things that we could ask about. Could we just maybe change the wording ever so slightly and say, do you think the parish council should explore the provision of a centralized charging point for electric vehicles? Yes. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, yeah. just just to sort of put that on the back burner about the question overall, um, personally, I, I, I want us to be happy that what we resolved at the October meeting has been uh, met by the working group. Um, and that was that we were going to review the existing um, parish plan. Now, we've had a response back that the, that the working group felt that the parish plan was outdated or whatever, and therefore numerous... Um, the, the, the questions were outdated and therefore we come up with this additional questionnaire. Um, I'm conscious that we have to uh, do what we voted to do. Are council happy that what we have in front of us is actually the review that you were expecting? Are you happy that it is a review? Yes. Okay, Anne's happy. Yes. Has anyone's got, anyone got any reservations? Well, the this is not a review, is it? It's a, it's a questionnaire. Well, it's it's. The rev we reviewed the questionnaire, or the original one, and came up with this one. Hmm. I mean, the, the working group were going to review the existing crash plan and come back to us. They've they've now presented a proposed questionnaire. So I, I think we've gone on a stage. I just want to, I want to make sure that the, the That's council. That's what we said we would do. Well. You were asked to just do a review of the actions. The 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 um, the questionnaire is something beyond what you were asked to do. So I mean, you know, it's it's, it's information. I'm not, I'm not I'm not unhappy about that. I want to make sure that that council are happy that the existing parish plan has been reviewed, or whether we I don't want think to it's any different to any other action we agree to, where people go and take something away and come back with information. Graham, mm -hmm. let's be sensible and keep going. Thank you, Peter. I was unable to review the uh, previous parish plan because although the questionnaire says um, the results are available on the website, I couldn't see them. All I could see was the original parish plan. I couldn't see the review of the two, the subsequent two reviews. I couldn't, I couldn't see, well, you say it's two. It's actually, the reviews are not on the website yet. They need to be on the website. They do. They need to go out go and see, but they are available in the parish council documents, which is how I got hold of them from whoever was involved before. Yeah, um, and also on a point of there are there were actually two other ones. I think two thousand and there are Seven. a There's couple of other. Things. There's a couple of other other earlier earlier ones. So it has been reviewed quite a few times. Um, as I as I see, it, if we're happy to move on, the the survey I would like to think is is a work in progress. The problem I have at the moment is with all these uh, shutdowns and things, I would be reluctant to suggest that we issue this survey at this time. Um, and there's two reasons for that. One is because people are very busy and got, you know, we're, we're obviously okay because we're meeting here, but I think some people will be very busy. And also I think that people might be thinking differently at this time. Um, and I would suggest that we hold it until we get back to some kind of normality and people will be able to answer the questions from a normal point of view rather than from a Kobe point of view. I'm not sure normal is, <laughs> is going to be uh, what it used to be. Um, and I think already, you know, it's been nearly a year, or it has been a year, that people are changing a lot of their practices. So in asking people what they might want looking forward, then we might actually start to shape, you know, uh, how we want the parish to be um, and uh, you know, move towards that because nothing will happen that quickly in terms of responding to the um, answers to the questionnaire. But let's at least get a start point. Yeah, it could be a year before we are out of isolation, yeah. lockdowns, etc. Yeah, Sharon? 
Also, I think conversely, people have got a lot of time on their hands. You know, uh, there are people working from home, but, you know, any clubs, sports, play facilities, they're all kind of closed. So in a, in a way, you've got a captive audience. And actually on question number six, you might get some people who will say, you know, yes, I'm happy to maintain the paths and village car park or, you know, because um, they've got time on their hands or they've been furloughed or made redundant. So I, I just think actually, conversely, this is the best time to be getting villagers views yeah. because they are sitting twiddling their thumbs at home, apart from doing homeschooling, of course. But, um, you know, thank God I haven't got that challenge. But um, I mean, I'm still going to work, but you know, there's a lot of people who are working from home and would would probably respond to um, this if it was emailed, I think. And a lot of people who, are, because they're having to spend time uh, in Hilton, you see a lot mm. more people walking around Hilton, yeah. cycling, running, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. So the familiarity with the place has actually grown. So <laughs> it is a good time, I think. And it would be a great opportunity for those people who you know, don't normally walk around the village to be able to feed back about what they've seen or what they'd like to see or what they'd like to help with in the village. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's the general feeling on on the um, on the survey as it's been presented? Then, I mean, if the if the general chat is that um, it, it will be issued, um, do you think it would be prudent to revise it again before it gets sent out? I mean, we, we mentioned about the charging point and the, and the slight change of words. I just I'd send it as it is with those minor changes. Sorry, Kieran. Sorry. I just wondered if any other councillors are sort of wondering uh, whether the village is getting a bit fatigued with our various surveys. And, uh, um, because we've like quite a few engagement. recently. I wonder whether a bit of a breathing space might not be a bad thing. Well, it's, it's breathing space when the, I mean, let's face it, the survey is being presented to us. We can read it and we can make comment. Um, I don't see there's any harm in, in making comment. Uh, I just add that the way Anne reworded that bit about the charging thing, I'd be happier with that as long as it wasn't, it was left with some doubt that we could achieve it. I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. If sufficient interest was there, yeah. So I wonder if we could just hold on to it for one more month and just go through, you know, digest it and leave a bit more space between the last one we did. Yeah, that would certainly be my my wish. It's also a suggestion, rather. I think this is a good way of showing the parish council wants to engage with villagers, and I think the petition that we did had a very had a huge number of responses. They were very positive. They were very pleased the council were doing something. We need to harness that and keep on going. Yes, I, I agree. I, I think, you know, parishioners want to know what the parish council are doing. You know, I think a lot of these questions are, are really good. And I, I don't think, you know, 46% responded in the village last to the last one, which is probably one of the best responses we've ever had. So it just shows you that actually that, you know, people are wanting to engage. And, and also this will help towards the... Um, the cause, you know, the applications for funding for the pavilion, because actually what we have, well, in one of the funding applications I did, you had to say, you know, what sports or facilities the villagers would want to see in the village, um, you know, if the pavilion was um, renovated. So I just think then to have a survey with that, um, with that um, feedback, it would be, would be really good well that's going to be the two proposals on the on the page is that heather thinks this or it's going to i imagine would want to send out asap um and kieran suggesting that we um we wait we wait for a month presume bring it back in a, a a final version at the next meeting um i don't know i mean kieran you suggested yours first do you want to propose that uh, yeah i'll propose that yeah. okay does anyone want to second that? I'll go ahead and second that. You're seeking that. Okay, so in in terms of it, it, the proposal is that it comes back next month. Um, can I have a, we've had the second, the proposal and the seconder. All in favour of that action, please? 
One, two, three, four. Is that five or six? I can't. If, if six. I'm gonna, it's close. six okay. in favour. Okay, so that's that's carried then. So we're gonna we're gonna bring it back at the next Sorry, meeting. You, I just need your the other three to. Sorry, to Sorry. yes, all those against, all those against that. Heather's against, Sharon's against, and Anne's against. Okay, that's good. Sorry, I apologise for that. Keep doing it, don't I? I apologise. Okay, so um, in the meantime, are we all going to sort of comment about things that we'd like to put into it, or just sort of think about it? Just bring it back. Just bring it back next meeting. Okay. And I propose that if people have got changes, they email them into Anne or myself or Rob or Ian, who are on the working group, and um, we present a second one with those changes in next time. Yeah, let's not meet the next session and have a long uh, debate about it. I think you're right. I think that's a very good point. Yeah. We're, we're giving a month to make sure that any views have been put in and pulled together rather than just debated at the next meeting. Otherwise, we just deliberate forever. Okay. That's right. Fair enough. Um, right, moving on. To discuss and decide upon when to install the bookcase at the bus stop for the library. At the bus stop. Yes. Okay. Now we have a, a bookcase. It isn't quite ready to go in, but is uh, is more or less there. Um, because of the current sort of uh, health situation, I, I'm proposing that it doesn't go in just yet. As an aside to that, we've had comments from a parishioner about the fact that this is a bit of a risk. I, I feel quite confident that council vote, w w council were aware of this e extra fire risk. We got uh, approval from our insurers um, and council voted for it. So we would have difficulty in going back on that decision. So it's the, the bookcase is destined for that bus stop. It's just a question of when it goes in. Rob? Rob? Wait, but the photos in the supporting documents. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. The photos yes. in the supporting documents, are they relevant to this point? <laughs> Well, I think there are pictures of the fire that was supposedly found in the corner of the bus stop showing the, the sticks and the ash that was left behind. When, when, when were they taken? Sorry, I... it's a recent occurrence, is it? Well, it's, Relatively. It, it's a point that was mentioned to us. Um, and again, it's, it's a good, it's a good uh, it's a reason for communicating with prisoners because you think you've done a good communication job and then um, things come to light, but we did this well in as much as we did communicate with the neighbours or advise them what was happening and we got confirmation from our insurance company that fire would be covered uh, or in case of if anything, if the if the bookcase was vandalised, it would have to be removed. So I mean, I feel confident that we're, we're okay on that. Um, so that, that isn't really the issue. So I'm just trying to reassure you that we don't need to discuss that part of the uh, information that's in the documents. Sorry, in answer to Rob's question, those pictures were taken on the 3rd of January. So I guess it is relevant then. So since we made that vote, someone's given us evidence and someone's tried to light a fire in the place. We're thinking of putting ammunition, if you want to kind of put it in that regard. I just, I just, if it was like from years ago, that once upon a time, someone had tried to start a fire on the bookshelf, but it seems a bit, a bit relevant if someone's tried to start a fire in a place where we're thinking of putting flammable or potentially flammable material. That's the, that's all I'm thinking. While we may be covered in all that, I wouldn't really want to put anyone at risk by uh, putting something that will help someone put up a fire where they've tried to have a fire. That's that's my opinion on that. If if that's the opinion of uh, council, then we would need to store for the six month rule. I think because uh, we we voted in that in December. I think maybe even November that we do it, um, and to change that, uh, change that resolution, we'd have to have a special meeting or wait till that resolution elapsed in six months' time. So it's not it's a, sorry, Graham. Sorry to interrupt on a point here. It's not a special right. meeting; it's a special resolution. So you need a special resolution at the next meeting that would be presented in writing by five councillors to put it back on the agenda to decide whether to hold have the bus stop library. Sorry, yes, we would have to, yeah, okay. So what I'm saying is tonight we can't we can't change the decision, but it is possible to change it if council feels that that strongly. 
Anne, sorry, you had your hand up. Um, an alternative way of tackling that uh, potential issue um, would be to have a sort of rota of people who check the um, the bus stop on a regular basis and to include with the bookcase a notice that says, you know, I don't know, something along the lines of, we hope you'll help us maintain this um, and uh, ensure there's no damage caused, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I think that our ways to um, imply that the book, um, the bus stop rather, will be more utilized uh, than just simply waiting for a bus. And hence, uh, we would expect people to respect what's in there um, and the people who want to use the bookcase. Okay. Is, is this, can I just ask, is this the same uh, parishioner who's written to us on this occasion, who wrote to us previously, pointing out the same, their same concerns regarding using the bus stop for the library? Yes, I, it, I is. So. it is. Okay. Rob, I'll support you on your proposal if um, you want to take that forward. Okay. Well, I mean, that's and, and I think if we do a proposal, if that is a proposal, we should come up with a solution or an alternative, which could be something along the lines of, um, Heather had written a note saying she would want to have a, a resolution saying she would be in charge of the library. So there are a couple of ways you could go around it. One is a list is publicized of what books are available within the library uh, with a request to contact you, Heather, if people want to collect those. Um, alternatively, when um, we go back to having other facilities within the village opened, could it not be stored and people could come and collect it there? So like, or alternatively, put it in the pavilion and again, have a list publicized of what books are available. And say, if you want to get a book, the pavilion will be opened at X to Y on Mondays and Thursdays, come along and have a book. I think, I think you're really going- It would be safer. It, it might be safer, but we're going away from what we voted I know, but that's just, if we're going to have a resolution, then we should have some alternatives, shouldn't we? Indeed, but I'm just trying to think what's actually happened because we were we were very aware that fire was a risk. Um, we specifically went back to the bus, the, the, the insurers and said, what about fire? And they said, no problem, unless of course there is a, a um, uh, if it's vandalized, then it will need to come out. I think I'm right in saying onto Nicola. Yeah, I'm just trying to find the original communique from the insurers. They said that we would be insured for fire on the basis that there is no history. Ah. So if they, if in history terms, if they were to see those photos, we could be in trouble. Is that, is that new information then? Sorry, I'm just trying to find the original. <laughs> uh, Nicola, just have a, have a think of, no, no hurry, uh, Heather. I was just going to suggest, so the proposal on in front of us is to open a book shelf, a book library when the schools reopen, which we know is going to be after March the 8th now and could be much later. If we agree with that proposal um, and I'm in charge if it's there, then if Rob wants to put a, a special proposal forward in the meantime for the next meeting, that still gives that the opportunity to do so when the research about fire can take place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good idea. That's good. Yeah. And we could go back to the insurers in the meantime if we wanted to to show them the evidence that we've got or that has been presented and see what they say about that. Yeah. Okay. It did look like just a few twigs being set yes, fire. Right. It wasn't a, a big fire. Yeah. Okay. So we can. It depends on material, doesn't it? Sorry. Okay. So, so the problem really is in that we. Um, because of the, that we can't open it anyway is to uh bring this back to council when the schools have reopened no no, no? okay the proposal is that when schools reopen mm -hmm. then the library is opened we know that won't be till march the 8th if in the meantime other councillors want to put five councillors together to have a special proposal that can happen and that will happen for the march meeting okay that's that's, are you clear enough on Heather's proposal? Everybody? Yeah, yeah. okay. That's the proposal. Um, can we have a seconder for that, please? 
Okay, so that's and seconding. Uh, all those in favour of that course action, raise your hand. One, two, three, four. Okay, all those against. One, two, three, four. <laughs> okay, um, uh, and it's you. Are you abstaining? Are you? I'm abstaining. Okay, that's great. So it's a four one. It's a four four one. So the count, the, uh, the general chairman is going to have his uh, casting vote, which would be to go with my original decision, which is um, it comes back. Say again, Graham. What have you decided? We will go with Heather's. We will go with Heather's proposal. Okay, thank you. It just wasn't clear. No, it wasn't. I agree. Sorry, <laughs> I, was falling, I was falling over myself. Thank you very much. Good. Okay. Um, Right, to receive uh, a report from the recent council training attended by count, uh, Heather and Ian. Now, again, you saw this in supporting documents. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether we want to comment or anything or whether we just receive it as um, noted. Ian, uh, Heather, any? The only thing that I found particular, well, I found lots interesting, but the idea that you can spend up to 200 pounds without coming to the council I thought was something that we ought to bear in mind a great deal because that would give you, Graham, um, the authority to be able to approve various expenditure with Nicola um, and then come back to present what you've done rather than having to wait for a next council meeting. So when you want to repair the fences for less than £200, you could just go ahead and buy the wood without having to um, come here first. Yeah, That's yeah. in our financial procedures. Oh, yes, indeed. Oh, yes. Yes. I thought you could do that already. You can, but we don't seem to use it. We seem to bring every... See what you mean. Yeah. Oh, we, sorry, Heather, we did use it for the guttering, for instance, on the pavilion. Okay, it's, but it's, not for the lavender purchases and not for the wood for the fences. No. Okay. Uh, good, okay, that's fine. So we would... Um, do we need to propose that's being received, Nicola? Yes, please. Okay, so the... Um, Proposal is that we receive the um, document from Heather and Ian. Can I have a second of that, please? Uh, uh, Rob's seconding it. All in favour? Rob. Yeah, fine. Okay, that's for it. Okay, that's for uh, uh, Against? Um, against? No. no I'm, I'm just abstaining on this one. Yeah. Heather, did you. Oh, sorry, again. Yeah. yeah, you're what? Abstaining or. Uh, you're, Look, you're, I'm, oh. I'm receiving it. I'm happy with it. Right. Yeah, <laughs> good. Okay, that's, that's, that's good. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, right, now uh, item 166 has come um, from Anne. This is to discuss and sign upon hiring air quality monitors from HTC. Um, kind of follows on from the HCV report or HCV minutes. Um, there's some yeah. missing information in there. Yeah, Anne, far away. Yeah, um, well, not a lot to add really. This was information that um, Nick circulated September, October, something like that. Um, just to say that this uh, was available from HGC if we wanted to make use of them. And at that point, we were um, talking about pollution uh, and how the um, lockdowns had revealed to us how much cleaner the air could be, etc. Um, and I just thought to myself, and timing is the big question mark in my mind here, whether we should make use of the air quality monitors that HGC have available. But then that kind of links to the HCV uh, report, which is also on the agenda, where they are proposing um, a joint parishes uh, study on pollution levels. So um, I, I kind of would prefer that we went down that route, working with others than just doing something ourselves. But in principle, we could agree that um, the, that we could make use of the air quality monitors uh, if and when the traffic reverts to what it used to be. There's, um, obviously we are, we are taking air quality uh, measurements at the moment, but these devices are more comprehensive, I gather. They, they yeah. can take more bits and pieces, quite literally. Um, and at a, I would say a significant cost. So obviously, we, if you did go that way, you wouldn't want them for long. No. Um, which is why the timing would be significant, uh, you know, to choose the right sort of time. Um, mm -hmm. 
but as I say, for me, this takes a second, uh, is a second level, second order, if you like, from joining up with the other parishes to do something jointly. Yes, I mean, I'm I'm interested in it, it being there, but I would, I certainly wouldn't be happy to sort of vote to do it at the moment. Um, but as a, yeah, as a point I of interest, agree with that. it was noted today that uh, the man was taking down the um, he was he was servicing the tube. I don't know, has anyone actually seen him take take the, the information out? Well, he was he was spotted today, changing the tube and the lamppost. So that's uh, that's good to know that that's that's being done because there's still a cost there, and we were still. Um, Every time this comes up, we're a bit sort of hesitant as to whether we stop yet. So um, I would suggest that we don't hire from HEC at the moment. But yet yes, I agree. We, we bear it in mind. So that's a proposal that we don't do it yet. Can I have a second for that, please? I've got a question. Uh, okay, sorry. Okay. Uh, the minutes of the HCV meeting that we have were for a meeting held in October. That's mm -hmm. correct. Um, at which point they were talking about this joint drive and trying to get a decision out of the councils, weren't they, Anne? Because they were aware people would be setting their budgets for the new year. And I see that at the end there was a meeting due on the 16th of December. Yep, and I don't know the outcome of that meeting. Oh, OK. So say. we don't know whether or not they actually came up with a decision to... And Andy um, might know, um, but I don't. OK. And Heather, you didn't go to that one? I'm standing in for Laura. Well, the, but that's um, part of the issue. But that's a, that's a separate agenda item. But uh, you know, g given that Laura no longer uh, attends, you know, do we need to nominate someone to uh, attend that group and be more active in it? The okay. ACV team. Mm. Um, that need to go on the agenda for next time, won't it? I guess. Well, I've got it on the agenda this time. Well, let's just start off with 166, which is discussion about hiring air quality. The general feeling is that at this time, okay. we wouldn't be hiring air quality monitors. Uh, that's yeah. a proposal. Can I have a seconder for that, please? Not hiring. Uh, Anne is seconded. it. Wow. All in favour of not hiring? Can I have a show of hands? One, two, three, four. Uh, uh, Peter, what are you doing? Yeah, sorry. Okay, so that's, that's whatever. Uh, against? Abstaining? You're abstaining? Hmm. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Thank you. So that's eight one. Thank you. Um, right now, this is uh, one six seven to discuss and decide upon supporting the HCV group regarding environmental action. Uh, again, you've got a proposal from Anne as to what she is requesting or suggesting. Um, yeah. Well, I, it was um, given that Laura no longer goes to those meetings. We're not, in a sense, represented with the HCV group, um, and. Um, they have plans, uh, a variety of things that they're doing to um, take action to improve the environment um, and to monitor things like air uh, quality, etc. So I, my main proposal is shouldn't we be participating more actively with the HCV group? Um, and uh, because part of their agenda is this joint parishes review, um, can we please sign up for it? <laughs> hmm. I mean, as I just remember, we were we we did sort of some put some money or some interest aside for the environmental monitoring, didn't we? And it appears that they they haven't got uniform agreement amongst other groups, have they? Is that is that fair to say? Don't know yet. I need to uh, catch up with where they are on their their plot. Okay. Um, yeah. What's this, uh, what do people feel? Throw it open to the floor. Are we sort of ambivalent or do we have an idea? Um, or do we suggest that we send representatives to try and find out what's happening? Or send, uh, we, we ask for, for a representative to take Laura's place to find out yeah. what, what's going on. Speak please somebody. No. Yes to all of that. Yes, okay. Well, I'm gonna suggest that rather than applauding something we're not entirely sure what they're up to, um that we uh perhaps tonight well actually can we can we do that nicola it's not actually on the agenda is it i'm um, just to think how the agenda's how the agenda's this, worded how, the, how is the agenda worded we're uh discussing, blah, 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 discussing blah, blah, supporting i would suggest that if we send representative we are supporting 
Exactly. I think, I think exactly. you can uh, call that. Yeah, okay. So item 167, I'm going to suggest that we we ask for a nomination or a nominee to um, representative to sit on the HCV uh, group with a view to offering our support and trying to um, unify what, what, what's happening. I think I'll, I'll take that as a vote. Can I have a second of that, please? And seconding it. All that in favour of that action? So it takes that. Yeah, that's a unanimous in favour. Okay. The next thorny question is: Does anybody have the time or the interest, or can I, uh, can we get a representative to be on the HCV group? Is anybody willing to do that? Um, well, I'm I'm willing, but I'm conscious that Heather has also been um, instead. But I don't know your availability. <laughs> Heather's, Heather's shaking her head. Okay. Okay, so Anne, you think you step forward, they're a bit too smartish. Um, so the, uh, Anne's offering to do that, so I can't imagine there'd be much objection. So that's, uh, Anne can be proposing herself. I'm happy to second that. Uh, all in favour of Anne as the HCV representative? Fine, yeah, Kieran. Unanimous, brilliant. That's very kind of you, thank you. Okay, so moving on to 168, discussions on upon actions regarding the Rural Community Energy Fund. Again, you've got some information in front of you on this one. Um, thoughts, please. I mean, we've really only got the one building and I'm a little bit confused about what this company does, but um, I might be misreading it. So anybody got any thoughts on what, what's in front of them? Kieran. Yeah, I, I noticed um, Anne calling for a questionnaire. I wonder if this could be wrapped up somehow with the parish plan questionnaire. Yeah, I mean, it does seem rather, a, you know, from your point earlier, that we do get survey fatigue. And I think it's rather a, a broad question to ask parishioners what they feel about rural energy. I think we should be coming up with a proposal, or if at all, uh, as a, a way around it. So, uh, Heather. I read the documents and I think what they're suggesting is they will come and do a feasibility and make some suggestions and then do a consultation for us. So I don't think we need to do anything apart from sign up and say, come and do a feasibility study for us. Yep, that's how and, I read it. And they would facilitate the people, yes. Um, yeah, it's strange how they make their money, isn't it? How, where they get the money from? But that's not our problem, I suppose. No. Um, I mean, we have really only got the pavilion as a, as a community building um, that I can think of. Um, but I didn't, I think it's also local homes, so I wasn't sure how that yeah. fitted together. So I was happy for them just to come along, do a survey, work out what they could do to Hilton, and then let us know. I mean, the, you, you can get communal um, biomass heating systems, um, you know, other uh, ecologically friendly uh, ways of generating uh, power for um, you know, an estate of houses or whatever. So there are there, there are quite imaginative um, ways of of uh, improving one's impact on the planet through creating energy in other ways. I must admit, when I read it, um, I didn't get that excited by us covering the cricket field with solar panels or anything like that. But I thought it'd be a wonderful <laughs> opportunity to explore perhaps having a, a ground sourced heat pump for the uh, cricket pavilion. Yep, or air source. We have two, they were brilliant. Whichever. It seems to be more obvious, wouldn't it? Be noisier, but yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. I looked upon it as that, that sole project would be worth pursuing. Well, why don't we sign up and see what they say? Social benefits to the community. Uh, this could be the village hall, local school, sports, I or vulnerable households. I mean, that's the only one that would be households. So I think you really would be looking at a community building or vulnerable households. I'm not aware of any vulnerable households, so it wouldn't be available to the general public. Um, I mean, I'm not sure that's quite true, right, Graham? Oh, I'm only, I'm only reading what's in front of me. No, no, no. I think there are vulnerable households in Hilton. Oh, OK. OK. Yeah. Yeah, very much so, actually. Okay, that's good then. Right. Um, okay, so what's the general feeling that we we engage these people to find out what they can do? Or yep. at all? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, who wishes to pose that? Anybody wish to pose that? Uh, Heather, you're going to pose oh. that? Okay. Uh, can we second of that 
that applicant that proposal please oh sharon's seconding it all yeah. those in favor please put your hands up one two three four five six okay um and seven. six yeah seven seven sorry seven and against is no and abstaining because they're not too sure is myself and rob okay fine so we'll see what happens with the next stage of of that application that's great thank you very much uh okay so moving swiftly on to the next item this is to uh, a letter received or email received for requesting permission to carry out metal detecting on the green again it's one of those questions that if one person does it in a response manner it's not so much a problem but it's the precedence uh, which makes it a bit tricky. So uh, I don't know whether we wish to engage with that or just say a blanket, no, thank you. I mean, it must have cropped up before. Um, I, I think it's a lovely idea. Why not? There's a lot of interest at the moment in our Roman heritage, for example, um, and going back further. So I would go for it. Okay. Kieran, um, I'm talking about open spaces. Obviously, there's a document about what is and isn't permitted on the green. Does, is detecting covered? No, it's not. Okay. Um, no, we, we are uh, we're quite clear about uh, the green can't be used for an individual's profit or gain. Um, and should he find a Saxon hall underneath the, uh, the cricket pitch, then um, that would then be it would go to the Crown and Treasury Evaluation Committee, and that would then have to decide who gains from it. And it's usually a 50-50 split between the finder and the, uh, and the owner of the land. So you could then argue that this would potentially be for the benefit of the person doing this commercially. So um, it depends how picky you want to be about it. But I think we, are, we, we could object to it on that basis because it is in our policy. Um, I do worry, I don't know if anybody's listened to the archers recently, but there's been a whole story on um, people uh, doing this on farmland, it does have its issues. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that one person, but then everyone sees him, um, and then it's uh, it's a precedent to set, and it's very hard. It, one thing that I do think we need to be is is fair and consistent. Um, so I don't think the council has much to gain. Um, but if but, if someone metal detects across the green, for example, mm -hmm. and finds nothing, then mm -hmm you know, nothing to lose. Um, if they find something of significant historical interest, then truly that's a good thing for Hilton. Uh, yes, potentially. But if we wanted to do that, then maybe we should organize it ourselves to do a survey like that, rather than just have a, um, somebody come in um, without any real control over what they're going to be doing. So this person, we could say, um, uh, if you do it on behalf of the parish council. Why not have that conversation with them? And would they, you know, if Kieran, you're saying they would split the um, profits? No, if there they, was any. it's usually decided that way, um, but it yeah. has to go to the Treasury Valuation Committee, which is part of the Crown and they would make the decision. Yeah, okay. I know nothing about metal detecting, but does it involve digging holes in the green? Absolutely. That's, that's, yeah. that's find safe. something, yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, if, if, if they find, if they have a signal that suggests there's something down there. Yeah. Just to move it, okay, we've had the first thing. I'm gonna propose that we uh, don't give permission. Um, based on the precedence and that it's not in our policy um can i i mean we'd actually need to give the the uh, the gentleman any any reasons he's asked for permission if it's declined um that's that's fine um my proposal will be is that we decline it can i have a second of that action please anybody wish a second okay anybody wish to suggest an alternative proposal yeah, I, I propose that we give him permission and put some conditions around it. Proposal, seconder for that one. What, sorry, what conditions? 
Uh, well, conditions, um, uh, if our concern is uh, digging holes, for example, um, and although he does say in, the, in his statement that he's very tidy and so on, that, uh, you know, that any holes he does dig, he reinstates. Um, but if he finds something, obviously, then we might end up with some archaeologists uh, on the green. But, um, you know, just things like, you know, um, if you're rooting around and you find an old bar of iron or something, then you reinstate the ground as you found it. Okay. So that's what I meant. Is that sufficient, Nicola? Are you okay with that? Yeah. Did you want to put anything in there about fines? Um, Et was going to say something. I was just going to say, um, would we not have to draw up a contract with this chap to secure any of this? And if so, do we need to bring in uh, the lawyers on this? Don't know. I think in his proposal, he, it'd be interesting to see what form he's got, because he said in his proposal he's got a form that he could share with us. I've got a proposal. Yeah. Can I propose that we go back to him and ask him to produce a contract which sets out what he is responsible for and what he will do with the remains. And we don't make a decision tonight. Okay. What he will do with the, what did you say? We put it back to him to come up with a contract that we're happy with. But again, you're, I mean, okay. it comes up the contract that we're not, it's sort of horse and cart. Yeah, I think, yeah, you need to be clear if you do that, that you're undecided, but you would want more information as opposed to yeah, giving yeah. him the impression that if he gives a contract, he's got the deal, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. Uh, Peter, you've got a hand up. Would it be as wise to ask the Green Policy Group or what, whatever we call ourselves at the minute to take it forward with this chap? Because it obviously the they the Green Working Group set out the policy of what can be done and can't be done on the Green. Um, so why don't they take it forward with the guy to get more information? And could we not say to him, yeah, you'll be, if we get to the point of agreeing it, can we not say yes, but you tell us when you're coming? And, just and then we can monitor it. Because mm. we've still got this issue of if we allow him to do yep. this, he has the right as the person that found it to make a claim to the Treasury and Valuation Committee to have some part share of the value of what, what's found. And it's yep. out of our hands. And so we are effectively condoning somebody to potentially make some income out of the green, which is, which is against our policy document. I think that's the problem. And this would be regardless of contract? This would be regardless of contract. Okay. okay. So if you put that again, Graham, I'll second it. Okay. Based on the difficulty of this system, I'm going to reposition that we say no to the gentleman. Can I have a second of that, please? Here and you're seconding it. All those in favour of that action? I think I'm there. Two, three, four, five. Okay, so I've got there's five in favour. Against? One and against. Abstentions? Presumably the three. Uh, Heather, I, I missed. Were you abstaining or against? Four. Four. Okay. Nicola, are you, are you on, okay on the numbers? Sorry, can we just go back to the vote? So who's in favour? Okay, so I didn't see your I didn't see your hand, Heather. Six sorry. in favour. So it's five. Okay. Um, and Sharon and Rob, I think, were abstaining. Fine. Okay. Thank you much. That's good. Okay. So we'll move on to the next item: uh, Christmas lights. Whew, something light and fluffy. Um, this is basically because the lights, as you say, we got a, a, a good feedback. I think the proposal here is that we just send a letter or an email to say thank you. Well, anything? Yeah, would that be okay? That's my proposal. That we thank the two people who are. Oh, so, and, no, no, I'm just seconding you. Fine. Okay, so the constant we time. To Nicola to send. Oh, thank you. To send an email to those concerned, uh, don't bother sending it to me because I've, I'm here and I've, I've received your thanks. So just to the other two helpers would be great. Thank you very much. That's proposal. Seconded that is and seconding it. All those in favour, say aye. Well, isn't brilliant. Okay, thank you very much. Right, uh, interesting. 
uh, sorry. Now, item 171, discussion of a response to conversation regarding Willow Farm Haddenham. As I understand it, we got this because we'd already made comments, but I'm pretty sure that what's in there is not relevant and we can't discuss it. Is that right, um, Nicola? Guide me on this one if you can, please. The, the changes that are proposed, this is an amendment to the original planning permission and the changes don't seem to affect Hilton in any way. No, so that's the proposal is that we, I don't even know whether we respond or whether we just um, do nothing. Noted. I would just noted, but, but I don't know whether we respond to them, but I think we note it amongst ourselves. Yeah. So that will be my proposal for 171 is that we note the information there. Can I yeah. have a second of that, please? To note it, okay, that's, that's and noting it. All in favor of uh, noting what's the information? Unanimous, that's of it. No, oh, I'm abstaining. Yes. No, abstaining. No, no, abstaining. Abstaining. Okay, thank you very much. Um, right, item 172 um, is people looking for uh, responses on their uh, how do we do kind of questions. So, uh, bearing in mind that um, Nicola deals more with the highway service, I'm going to propose, if she's happy, that she completes the, the consultation. Are you happy to do that? Yep. And can you respond on our behalf with what you feel about their service? Yes. Can, 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 can we suggest things to add? Uh, have, yeah, I presume so. Is that, would that be okay, Nicola? Yeah. Um, Thank you. Provided they're not, not too personal. I mean, that's a tricky thing, isn't it? So if you're getting responses from a counsellor, you need to be sure it's sort of effective uh, sort of counsel. Um, my, my, what's in my mind is just to mm -hmm. ensure that some of the points and issues raised by uh, the Hilton Traffic Group and the various um, attempts we've made to get somewhere with highways are represented in the responses. Okay. Um, just, yes, because it's an online form, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite short. And the consultation has actually closed on this one. So if you do want to make any comment, I would need it straight away because I've only got an extension on it for a couple of days. Ooh, okay. Right, okay. Right. Well done for uh, getting, yes, I, thanks for getting that extension. That's great, thank you. Um, okay. So, Again, sorry, you on hang on, you proposed, we haven't actually voted. Sorry, okay, proposed that we um, ask <laughs> our clerk to complete the stakeholder response in with information or input from Anne. Um, that's a proposal. A second of that, please. Um, sorry, I'm not muted. Um, is that only Anne then? No, you can, you can, no. no you can put because the proposal is that we accept just comments from Anne, isn't it? No, well, she she said she, she was the only one who, who jumped in. But let's say with with information from Polish from councillors. And I'll, I'll allow Nicola to make judgment whether that's a, a personal response or it's applicable to the council's actions, if okay. you see what I mean. Yeah. Okay. So that's a proposal that Nicola, with any information she receives from councillors, completes that consultation. Seconder, please. And seconding, all in favour? Say aye. One, two, three, four, five, six, all unanimous. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, right. And a similar one here is the NALC consultation regarding land ownership. Again, we have a, uh, a, um, a consultation document, which I'm hoping that Nicola would complete on our behalf. Um, I can't imagine this is particularly, so we'll presume it's fact, it's fact, isn't it? There's not much, um, uh, so it's not comment on their service. It's, it's, uh, it's regarding land ownership. So it's a yes or no, really, isn't it? Are you, are you happy to do that, Nicola, on behalf? Yes. Fine, thank you very much. Can I have a, uh, I propose that we ask our clerk to complete that response. Um, have a seconder for that, please. Uh, uh, Kieran was there, I think, first. So that's the seconder. I saw that, Ian. Uh, all those in yawning. All that, I know you were. All those in favour <laughs> of that action that Nicola does it, Ian. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's good. Um, right, this is an interesting one. <laughs> the only reason this is to discuss and sign upon the response to the consultation regarding the Sonica Energy Farm at Burwell Substation. Now, I have checked on the map where Burwell is. <laughs> My only assumption is that maybe they got us confused in Milton. Um, yeah. Basically, it's of, it's of no consequence to us, even if it's a wind turbine <coughs> from there. So I really don't think we need to respond. We can just note it amongst ourselves, unless anyone wants to make a comment. No. 
No, okay. So the response is that we note it amongst ourselves. No action required. Uh, second of the action, please. Uh, Ian, I see that you're in the middle of the chart, so I can just have to sit <laughs> on the far side there. Um, so all in favour of the action, noted. Fine. Thank you very much. That's good, unanimous. Uh, payments received, none. Um, we now need to approve the payments. There's quite a few this week. Yeah. Anybody got any problems or things you've seen they're not happy with? Yeah. No, by the look, we're okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'll just whiz down there. Obviously, the, there's more deep. This is the general outline. There's more details on the um, uh, in the supporting documents. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Okay. So I propose. Oh. Okay, this is the petition. Yeah, the lavender services. Can you trust Cardiff in fee? Fine. Okay. Um, so I propose that I or that they are, they're taken as uh, to, to be paid. Can I have a seconder, please, for those to be paid as they stand? Oh, Heather's saying yes. Thank you much. A seconder. All in favour of payments? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, right. We now move on to. Discuss and item 177. Discuss and decide whether to apply for funding from Living Sport to organise community sport events and to put this in place according to criteria advised by the funding. Now, this is one that Heather spotted. Um, Heather, far away while I get up the, the bit of information. Uh, oh, you're muted, Heather. Thank you. Uh, living... <laughs> Living Sport are giving money to villages, groups, um, constituted groups to spend on community activities. And I just off the top of my head made a suggestion about buying various bits of sporting equipment, bulls, for example, to um, them. And they said that's exactly the sort of thing they're prepared to fund. Um, however, it needs to be a constituted body. So either the application comes from the parish council um, to do that. It wouldn't start till after Easter because of COVID, etc. cetera, um, but the application would go in. Um, if the parish council don't want to do it, then there's a group of parishioners who are happy to become a constituted group and do it themselves. But um, it's really giving the parish council the opportunity to get involved in the first instance. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if anyone's got any questions. I was very concerned when the paragraph about it's working with people with disabilities health issues and those whose mental health has been significantly impacted by the coronavirus. I, I, I assumed that we were we were outside that bracket. Um, I would describe to... Hilton to her as a village of a thousand people with no public transport and issues of loneliness amongst some people. She said that's exactly what we want to address. Small okay. activities, I... health, loneliness. Yeah. I totally agree. There's a lot of people who are, are being affected by the pandemic, pandem, pandemic with their mental health. And um, it's, you know, I think it's affected everybody, but, you know, especially people in the village who have lost their jobs or, you know, feel like they're um, quite isolated. But this is geared towards children? No. Adults. Um, no? It's adults. Right. I mean, um, it's up to living sport as to whether we meet the criteria. The question is, do we want to put an application in? Yes. Yeah, yes. I think that's a great idea. Yes. Okay. Anybody else wish to ask any questions? Kieran? Yeah. Um, it seems like a lot of these type of schemes, you need some enthusiastic people on the ground in Hilton to be able to do it. If there was a group of people already there who would be happy to take this on, um, I wonder if it's best to pass it over to them. We'll find that out with the parish plan questionnaire, won't we? No, no Heather indicated that there's uh, a small group who are already looking at this. There is a small group. My qu I think it's about PR from the parish council, and I think it would be good for us as a parish council to be seen to be doing something like this and to push it along. And it could well be that the group that I've, I know are interested form part of the running of this. But if the application came from the parish council, it would be a really good thing. But it doesn't have to be, it's entirely up to you. So could it be a 
parish council work group which invited these people onto to manage this. Yeah. And are you looking to apply for up to two thousand pounds, Heather? Um, I costed it at fifteen hundred pounds when I, um, off the top of my head, with various things, showcase sets, all sorts of things you can buy. And is that one hundred percent funding? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but I just no, sorry. I thought what was... what sort of equipment? Because I'm 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 a little bit um, behind on this one. But what sort of equipment are you looking at? So you could buy eight sets of balls, for example. You could buy four croquet kits. You could buy um, various portable sporting equipment that people could use for an evening. Okay. They could borrow it, use it at home, practice, yeah. buy hula hoops, all sorts of things. Um. There used to be um, groups doing rounders on the green, um, you know, not on the cricket pitch, but, you know, there used to be groups that would come and play rounders. And, and it would be great to see, you know, families out when once the um, lockdown is lifted, just in, especially coming into the spring and summer. I think it's, it's a win-win situation because it's a free grant. And, it, and if we can buy you know, a whole net of footballs, for instance, or, you know, um, or all the other bits that you suggested and bat and ball or something. And also, you know, to get maybe youngsters back involved with cricket, you know, just a, a basic cricket set and things like that. It would, I think that would be great. Would the working group uh, be able to administer or to look after the um, equipment, hand it out, or would that be a function of the council? Um, it would depend which equipment. If you've got bulls, for example, then you could loan them out to people to look after during the week and bring them back the following week. If it was larger equipment, you might have to approach the pavilion and ask if the pavilion could store it or something like that. Sure. I mean, at the moment, it's just, do we want to apply for the grant? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I get that. Okay. Okay. So yes. that's, the, that's the communication. Okay. Um, so that's Heather. Wish to propose that? Yes, I'll propose that we apply for the grant. And okay. can I work with Nicola on filling the application form in? Uh, well, if we get there, yes. <laughs> I'll bring sure. that into the proposal. <laughs> okay. Um, seconder for that, please. You second it and seconding it. All in favour? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. How can that be eight, isn't it? One, Sorry. two, six, seven, eight. That's eight in favour. Okay. Abstaining against yours truly. Okay. So Sorry, uh, Graham, were you abstaining or against? I'm against. against. I, I, I got it around the wrong way again. Sorry. <laughs> I apologise. I'll get it right one day. Okay, that's fine. Thank you very much. So we then move on to uh, any other business, I think. Is that right? <laughs> Councillor's items. Yes, you're not allowed to use, use any other business. Okay. Um, Heather, I'll go across the, in, in the order that they appear on my screen. Heather, any uh, um, council items? Um, I would like to say congratulations, Graeme, for managing the whole agenda in the timely manner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, got nothing. Uh, Sharon? No. Okay. Rob? No? Okay, Peter. Only to only to thank you, Graham, for the work you're doing as a handyman around the village. It's, it's what I've <laughs> yes. bumped into the other day. You know, just thought it was worth mentioning. Night time. <laughs> and Ian. A little bit. Um, Peter. And Mark. Yes. Oh, away. Come on, move on. <laughs> Kieran. That was all I was going to say. No, Ian. No, thank you. It. No, I'm good. No. Okay, Anne. Um, just one point. I read something in the Kapal, no, <clears throat> not one of those things, that parish council meetings should not be longer than two hours. <laughs> uh, and and I would like us to aim for that, please. Our standing orders. Our standing orders. Aim, aim for that orders. by having more manageable agendas. Yeah, or people. Yeah, okay. Well, it's, uh, mm. you, well, I won't, I won't go, discuss that. Okay, noted. Fine. Um, mm. <clears throat> Thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you in a month's time. Sounds yeah. good. Well done. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.